Good evening, folks, and welcome back to another Wednesday night hobby hangout. Hope everybody's well. Hope your Monday, the rest of your Monday evening and your Tuesday went all right. Well, and most of your Wednesday, I suppose. How's things? What's everybody up to? What are you all painting this evening? Let me know what you're doing. Uh, I'll have a quick look in the chat now and see who we've got around. Um, Peter Nicholas was in nice and early. I think he was commenting on, a, on something. I think it was Busey who had mentioned about going for a 10 a 10k run, I think he said before this, this stream. Dirk was in as well, said his fridge is not even 10, 10 metres from the computer desk, so we're running around. Arnold, good evening to you, mate. Um, Peter Cummins saying good evening as well. Phil Wilkinson says hi, hope you're all well. I'm very well, thanks, mate. Hope you are too. Buddy Clive says hope everyone is doing well. I have way too much happening at work today. I'll have to catch you all later. Yeah, no worries, Barry, mate. I hope you are okay, buddy. Um... Um, Vincentson as well saying good evening Jen's just finished his workout ready for some action everybody's getting into the fitness at the minute uh, Jeffrey Higdon good afternoon to you mate Blizzards is saying a wild Blizzards has appeared <laughs> have you been a bit uh, a bit blustered mate is that what it is Simon Parfitt says evening all is well he's got some buzzing badges on the paint table and getting ready for a game on Sunday rolling dice mate I'm missing that at the minute um, it's, I'm not even going to talk about that stuff. Mark Wright says, "Evening, everyone. Just had soccer. Oh, I thought you said soccer trouble, <laughs> scooter trouble. All done now. I'm glad you're all right, buddy. Spider Lord, nice to see you, mate. Nice that you've made one again. Good evening, and Marco. Hope you're well, buddy. Um, Bless is doing his finishing touches on the Lords of Blight, and then maybe something for the slow grow if Andy announces it. Yeah, I'll probably do it in the next day or so, mate. I've just, I've, I've been. This is the first week I've had a, a proper week to kind of." To get into a routine, getting up at a regular time, kind of taking my little one to nursery, having the whole day to myself to do some work, picking up at a certain time, that kind of stuff. And I've been really cracking through some work this week. So you'll notice that there is a video every day this week. And I'm hoping to try and kind of make that a more regular thing now. So yes, tomorrow's video is already done. Friday's video, needs to be, it's been scripted today, it needs to be recorded tomorrow. And it should be up on Friday. So yes, that should give me some time to get the slow growth started made for you, Patreon for. Um Mark uh, saying there, how is everyone doing? Um John Estel says, even only sat with a pot noodle as I haven't been able to make my tea yet. Hopefully I get the chairs sanded and varnished so I can paint next week. I don't mind a cheeky pot noodle now and again, mate, but the only flavour I like is the beef and tomato one. Jonathan Wyborn, good evening to you, mate. Just popping to see a lord can't get his head around which hobby. With a return to working in a large school, hope everyone is well. Yeah, I hope you're okay as well, mate. My, let us see my little one's um, back at nursery now. He's gone to a new nursery, which is kind of part of a bigger school as well. Um, so I can I can appreciate, mate. It might be a bit stressful at the moment. Um, Palms is in as well. So welcome to another Monday night live stream where we at. <laughs> you cheeky beggar. Um, uh, where are we up to there? It's a. Uh, Jumping around tonight again. Uh, Yorkham's in as well. Good evening, mate. Hope you're well. This is more work on these Spire Tyrants. Nice one. Um, Spire Lords on the neck runs as well. Right, if you can get to the table. Um, David Mackay, nice to see you too, fella. Super Punkman Man's in as well. Always good to see you, buddy. Jason says he needs to get busy with his own neck runs. Uh, yeah, that's kind of why I just I, th I thought I'd better just crack on with some of my stuff. Um, Red Rose Ward Gaming, good evening, Anna. How are you? So there's uh, painting some Caradons. I saw you'd been um, doing some of them. Are they specifically for Warcry, are they? Um, Peter says Bretonian Bowman back on the table as well. Stu McTurty's in as well. McMurty, Murtry, sorry. Um, good evening, all. Busey's back now. Red Rose Wargaming says there's a lot of background hum noise on your mic. Have I pressed it? Is there really? Uh, let me just... Uh Oops, what was that one? Ortega just pledged via Patreon as well. Thank you very much. Um, there shouldn't be any hum noise. Nothing has changed since the last stream. Is it alright for everybody else? Or am I kind of am I, am I pissing in the wind with this one at the minute? Let me know in the chat if you think it's alright. Um, um, where were they? Peter's seen two whole pages gone off the top of my screen already. Yeah, it jumps around all over the place tonight. I try and keep a track of. Bobby Clarkson, good evening. He's finished painting two repulsion tanks for charity. Nice, mate. I like to see what you're doing there with that charity stuff. Mike G's in as well, working on some Vanguard minis. A nice one, fella. Which which ones are you working on, mate? Is it is it minis for Vanguard or are they Vanguard minis for 40k? Um, Vincent's been doing a bit of fitness. He's dropped from 150 kilos to 110 and still going. Nice one, mate. Congrats. Um... 
<laughs> Ponzi said, I think fitness does more harm than good. It definitely doesn't to me, mate. Um, different gear says, maximum six player events from Monday. Yeah, I ain't getting into that tonight, mate. Not after last week's air chat. Um, uh, what's that? Yeah, I'm just looking to see what we've got. Blizz is saying, I suppose a young one is the ultimate slow grow. <laughs> no worries. Um, Thomas Elder, no home noise for me on audio at all. Good, mate. Thank you very much. I'm glad that's all right. Everybody else is saying it's all right. Um, I am seeing howdy all as well. David Mackay says, currently building a mini dio. Got inspired by the mini swap. Yeah, it's nice to kind of set that stuff off. Ortega says, should be a good one tonight and want to be part of the cool gang. Thank you very much, Ortega. Very nice to have you on board. Right, let's get cracking on with the painting then. So, last week I was painting up my Necrons. And I got all of those finished, so I've got I've done the bases as well. You can see there, I've done that Agrelin Earth basing. Um, so that's them, kind of pretty basic paint jobs, but they they look nice when they kind of ranked up when there's like ten of them all together and stuff like that. So that's the ones with one of the type of weapons. Tonight we're doing the fellas uh, with the with the other type, types of weapons. I can't even remember what they're called, um, but yeah, let's let's crack on with that. So. Yes, has anybody been getting any games in then? Or is anybody looking forward? Are you, are you kind of um, eyeing up some new bits and pieces? Anybody got their eye on any new games at the moment? Gauss Reapers, or Ghost Reapers, I should say. Thank you very much, Spider Lord. I'm not quite up on the names of the weapons yet and stuff. Um, and I'm sure you all you all know I'm uh, relatively kind of new to 40k, really, when it comes to kind of... Uh, specific names and the law and bits and pieces i've always kind of kept an eye on it over the years and i love the minis and things but specifics kind of escape me a little bit i think i'm going to do i'm just going to move this camera down a touch so i can yeah i can get my, in a bit slightly more comfortable position and i'm just going to move the microphone Is that, there you go just so it's not put in the corner there we go cracking on um Peter Cummins says pew pew sticks. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where they are. They're all pew pew sticks to me, mate. That's kind of how I think they are. Um, yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, so as I was saying, has anybody got their eye on anything new at the minute? Anybody looking forward to anything? Anything you've seen coming up? Are you, are you looking to pick up a new game at the moment? Is anybody picking up any new minis that they're, they're just picking up just purely because they want to kind of paint some new bits and pieces? Anything like that? Um, I'll just see somebody in the chat there saying um, Blizzard's looking forward to the Mantic ship game. Yeah, I think uh, we should be getting some more information on that very, very soon. So as soon as we have more, we can start We can start talking about it more. I, I, obviously, there's nothing to talk about at the minute. And I don't really want to talk about speculation because I already know more than I probably should at the minute. And I don't, I don't want to end up giving stuff away. So, um, yes, we can start speculating on the stuff that I, when, once I don't know about it. Um, but yes, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll I'll be completely honest. What what I know about it, obviously, and like I said, I know a little bit more. I'm, I'm pretty excited to see it actually. So it's uh, should be good news. Um, I'm playing a lot of uh, of God tier at the moment. Really enjoying that. I actually went and bought an extra an extra um, what we call war band as well. So that's kind of. Uh, that's a, um, an extra an extra one to the list of the ones I've got to play. Um, where are we up to here? Let me just scroll back a little bit. Peter saying, except when they're coming at you, then it's poo-poo sticks. <laughs> yes. Uh, John says, for me, I think I can hear noise gate, so there's no hum when you're not talking, but when you're talking, there's a bit of fuzz. I don't know what it is. I mean, I, like, honestly, Nate, nothing has changed since Monday's stream. I've got no idea what it is. It's... I mean, when I'm not talking, it'll cut off because there will there will be a noise gate on it, like just to basically cut out the, the, when I'm not speaking at all. But I don't know why there's any hum. Um, we're gonna have to put up with it because I ain't messing about with it now anyway. If it's if it's that bad, I'm sure everybody will just switch off. So then I then I'll know that it's time to go. But I haven't got it'll, it'll make it worse now me messing about with it. So we'll just we'll just crack on and keep going. Um, Thorlum says not much in screen. Get used to that, mate. It, it bounces around. I'm, I mean, it's like it, I, I kind of end up just moving around as I go. I, I check it once in a while and try and get it back on camera, but 
it's not like I'm doing any kind of tutorial type stuff. It's more just a bit of a, a hangout for everybody to get together and stuff. If anybody's got any specific questions about uh, about what I'm doing painting wise and stuff, please just shout up in the comments. If you type at Blackjack Legacy, it highlights it, and I can see you're trying to kind of get my attention or something. But um, otherwise, mate, it'll, I'll try my best to kind of keep it on screen. I've I've got a, a relatively new setup here. I've got the camera quite close to my face, so I, I shouldn't be leaning into shots so much as I have done in the past. Um, and I've kind of set it to a comfortable position, but there will be times when I kind of, you know, when I when I move it around a little bit. So we'll get there. We'll get there. And at the minute, I'm just I'm using um, the what's it called, Sycorax bronze, and we're just doing a bit of a kind of like a like a heavy dry brush or an over brush, just over the entire the t entire model. Uh, Palms you see in there, best community in the business. I agree, mate. I agree. Marcos has bought a Goopa Palooza. Jumping around there, a, a Goopa Palooza box set. Those crazy models. I don't even know what that is, mate. What what, what is it? Um, Spyloss has braced myself for the new Necron prices after the sneaky price jump with Lumineth. Yeah, I've got a feeling. Um, one of two things is going to happen, and I kind of touched on this in the live stream the other night. So uh, with the um, What's it called? The Silent King. It's obviously going to be a big model and stuff. I think either we'll see it slightly less than the Techless model, based upon the fact that there is a, now uh, an influx of new Necron players, because a lot of people obviously bought that um, bought that Indomitus box, and then obviously all the starter boxes and bits and pieces. Um, and they, they'll, they know for a fact they can obviously sell quite a few of them. Um, or, if the, um, if the Techless model sells... Um, well, then I think maybe they might start a thing. Actually, 105 quid's quite, people are quite happily paid 105 quid, so that's where we'll pitch it. So I, I'm kind of, I'm mixed on this one. My gut says it'll be slightly lower, but who knows? I don't even know the size of the model. I mean, it, it could actually be bigger than the Techless model, which means um, they might uh, try and push the price up even. Um, um, or take us in his plans to make some um, the Drowned Earth minis and hope to play it. Nice one, mate. Um, I keep meaning to get give the Drowned Earth a try after I um after I played through that. I forget what it's called now, Liar Chronicles. When I played through that, um, I definitely kind of got a bit of a, a feel for for the um the Drowned Earth game. It seemed pretty cool. So yeah, at some point I might give that a try. And um, when they actually sent out the the Liar Chronicles demo, he, he did actually package up some um, drowned earth minis for me but unfortunately the, the post office sent the, all of the stuff to the wrong places so somebody else who got a demo a demo version to to um to film i think it was ash barker um ended up getting my uh ended up getting getting my drowned earth minis so i never did get any but uh yeah we'll get to it at some point i'll pick some up i've got a lot on the um on the plate at the minute anyway so i'm in no rush for for new stuff to be fair at the minute um, I've got some things that's kind of like lined up in the background, so and I've got some catching up to do as well on there, uh, on some stuff I've promised. So we'll we will catch up. Yoakum seeing two games of um, brothers and badges, fun games with his brother. Uh, although I want to play some Warcry too, but my brother is like two hundred percent into brothers and badges right now. That's kind of what happens, isn't it? I, and I'm a little bit like that with my mate as well. Like he's obviously not the not the hobby magpie that I am so much, and certainly doesn't necessarily have access to um as much kit as i very fortunately get sent things um so when i when he's been sort of spending ages painting something up he obviously wants to play that and then um uh, the last thing he needs is me he's then saying um oh i've just got this new game do you want to try this or, or do you want to try this or how about something different or so yeah it, it, it's a kind of a blessing and a curse at times i've got to try and keep kind of like abreast of things that's happening and try new stuff and see what I'm interested in so I've got more news and more more opinions really as well to kind of give you a lot but um, yeah sometimes that means that I I don't always focus on one game for 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 too long when it comes to actually physically just sitting and playing it with friends and stuff so yeah a bit of a blessing and a curse in that respect and um, Thordlum saying so war cry it is um, Jimmy Newton good evening to you mate how are you doing what was and so you so that you know I'll watch an episode of the boys season two right after this stream I'm holding off, mate. If I'm perfectly honest, I'm I'm avoiding any spoilers and stuff, and, and I'm kind of waiting until it's there to to watch the entire thing. So 
I'm impatient when it comes to kind of like waiting for the next episode. If I get to the end of episode three, because I think there's three episodes up, if I get to the end of episode three and then I, it's like a cliffhanger, I'll want to watch the next one, mate. So I'm kind of hanging on until I've got a bit of a bit of a buffer of them to to start to binge on. And by the by the time I start to work my way through them, the, the other ones will start kind of piling up in the background. Um, I've just started watching that. Um, oh, what was it called again? Um, oh, somebody recommended it to me last week. I've just watched the first episode of what's the like the the Arkham. Oh, I forget what it's called. Something country. I forget what it is now. Somebody will tell me in the chat. But uh, yeah, I've just I've, I watched the first. Um, the first episode of that, which was which was pretty good actually, I quite enjoyed it. So that's kind of just something I'm just watching on my own, really, not with my wife. So I'll just um, I normally kind of put it on in the background if I'm doing any kind of painting or building and stuff for 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 videoing. But to be honest, everything I've been doing this week has, has all been prepped and ready to go. So it's just been filming, editing, sort of taking photos, all that kind of stuff. I've not really had a chance to watch anything in the background. My GC is doing a Kings of War Vanguard. Basileans was just missing missing batch painting, but now I'm stuck on the character models. <laughs> yeah, there was a bit of a chat today, I think it was, about um, batch painting. I think it was Debs um, from uh, Debs with Hobby Studio was saying she's not she's not a fan of batch painting. And and I must admit, I, I never used to be either. And, and over time, I seem to have, like, I mean, I'm sitting doing it now, I seem to have kind of, like, gotten into a nice little rhythm of, actually, I, I quite like them... Um, mindless batch painting sometimes it kind of takes the pressure off um when you're painting but and actually you can see things kind of progressing quite nicely all of a sudden by the end of a session or something you've got like 10 models done it's quite a nice feeling really um and i think the trick as well is, is especially when you're first starting with batch painting is not not having too big a batch um I think I I kind of can I can manage to kind of batch paint with about 10 now I would say I, I tend not to go more than 10 at a time um, that was one of the reasons why I specifically only bought ten of these uh, these movable bases for the um, for the uh, Red Grass Games handle because I didn't I didn't want to end up getting more so I've got like ten bases so I can get them all ready to go and then just uh, and work through them. But um, yeah, I'm starting to oops, dropping the paintbrushes. I'm starting to kind of settle into batch painting now. Um, Spider Lord says not buying much at the minute. It's just about to jump off my screen there, so I'll just go back. Um, by the way, it's not by much at the minute, it just has not landed a new job yet, but have a backlog the size of Everest, so all's good. Yeah, that's the thing, mate, isn't it? I mean, one is it's a, it's a tough time for job hunting, mate, but I'm sure something will come up for you very soon. Um, the tabletop industry is not exactly um, on its knees at the moment with COVID. If there's definitely plenty of people still still um, buying bits and pieces, it just, it, it's just it's whether things are kind of um being new things are being developed or not yet at the minute um but yeah it's um we all have that mountain in the background that if we're if we're completely honest we're not we're not running out of stuff anytime soon i'm sure a few people are a bit more um what's the word i'm looking for they're, they're a bit more um organized and kind of don't let that kind of mountain get out, out of control but yeah for the vast majority of us it's it's a bit of a, a bit of a millstone we definitely buy more than we paint that's for sure um, Ortega is saying, um, same for catching up on the YouTube vids. I don't know what that was about. Peter Coombs says, Anyone seen the new Vanguard Ogres Warband? Great models, especially the Boomer Sergeant. Yeah, I saw them a little while ago, mate, when they were first announced. And I just saw that Rob's been sharing stuff for Mantic today as well. They're ready, they're either ready for order or ready for shipping or whatever it is. But yeah, there's some, there's some cool models in that list. Um, Tony, hello mate, how are you doing? Just, just waiting for the youngest to turn up for a sleepover and then I'll be retiring to the hobby room. Very nice, mate. Just uh, having a chilled chilled night there. Yeah? Um, Rob's in as well, says so I have to check back in about 40 minutes, getting a flu shot. Oh dear, hope everything's okay on that one, mate. Um, it seems funny getting flu shots in there in for what for us is um, sort of back end of the summer, really. Um, David Mackay says, general tinnitus among the community, I think. Um, I think if you've got like headphones in or something like that, it might be a little bit more noticeable and stuff. But I, I tend not to notice it when I'm watching like on TV or on my on my laptop or something like that. 
But if you've got headphones in, I think it might be a little bit more noticeable. But I'll I'll do a bit of playing after the stream and stuff. But I assume by the fact that there's a few of you still in, it it, it can't be too bad. Um, let me know if it is. If if it's awful, let me know, and I'll just have to I'll have to can it off and and see where I can see where I can fix for another stream at another time. But yeah, let me know. Um, oops, just bouncing around a little bit off the bottom of the screen. Um. Dirk saying, I'm just happy that gaming is starting again, currently dusting off some older games. Yeah, it's um I think unfortunately it's gonna it's gonna get a little bit harder for us. But yeah, I ain't really gonna go into that again tonight. I think we talked about that stuff last week, so um Iron says wrapping up his Star and Steel Fleet, maybe doing a Kings of War on Dead Army next, unless Mantic Naval Game is going to land soon. Like I say, I, I can't really say too much about it, but it. What I will say is, it's not. We're not talking like next summer or something. Um, and can I say? Let's say sooner rather than later. That's probably a nice way to say it. Um, Peter says I'm currently doing a bit of painting while collecting figures for my MSBG armies. MSBG. Something strategy battles at middle earth strategy battles in case I ever get to play games again. I think you have to be a bit of a fan of them of that um of that that those movies or those particular books I think because the models just don't do anything for me for that game if I'm honest. Um, but then I, I'm not a I'm not a fan of the Lord of the Rings stuff anyway. So, but I think if you're kind of like, if you're a fan of the movies and stuff, I'm assuming that um you'll find them awesome. Um, Palmsy says dry brushing is cheating. I think everything I do is cheating, mate. I always try and do it the easiest way possible. Um, Spiderloss, I was hoping that uh, Warhammer World was going to open again, but no chance of that now. Yeah, I was kind of hoping it would open up again soon as well, because it would have been nice to maybe try and organise a bit of a, a bit of a meet up, a bit of a, a bit of a day out, and, and it's an ideal spot to kind of um, for people to meet up, um, just for the fact that it's a big, a big gaming place with food and drink, and it's always nice to kind of have a wander around the, um, around the museum and stuff, but. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like that ain't going to be happening any uh, any time soon. Um, um, John saying he's waiting for the Matsudan and the Spectra too. Seen some pics; they look awesome. Yeah, the the spec the the Matsudan, I'm not not as a huge a fan on them. Um, they're not really my kind of style aesthetically, but um, the Spectra is a really nice model. It's it's something I'd consider picking up just to. Just to paint something nice, really, and just to try and take a little bit more time with it, rather than uh, to physically play that particular model. Um, be a nice, like, is a is a kind of a, is a treat to myself, really, just to to try and do something a bit different. Um, Peter saying yes, especially with a huge brush like that. All the difference in the size of the brushes is how long it takes me to do it, mate. That's not cheating. That's that's actually being efficient. Um, when you batch paint, that's exactly what batch painting is about. I'm assuming if that's really loud next to the camera, uh, next to the microphone. Sorry, I'm just washing that brush out a little bit. Um, yeah, there's no such thing as cheating. It's like you would you wouldn't paint a wall with with a brush that size, would you? You'd use a bigger brush or you'd use a roller. It's all about the right tools for the jobs. Um, right, where's the brush I want now? Okay. Um, next up, we're going to take a bit of uh, Necron compound. And we're going to really lightly just um, dry brush across the top of that bronze. Um, Spider Lord's saying the Silent King and Catan and, and Monolith all big models. Yeah, they are, they are big models. But um, as I as I mentioned on uh, on Monday's live stream and, and on the kind of on the on the Blackjack Clips one on Tuesday, it has little to do with the size of them. To be fair, really, um, and more to do with. Um, how many they think they're going to sell and if they think they're going to sell loads of them then they, they, they'll kind of they can afford to, to kind of uh, to drop the price very slightly really because it's all about um, that return on investment um, Ortega saying anyway I'll be off now but look forward to catch up with the rerun thank you very much Ortega I really appreciate you uh, joining the Patreon tonight if anybody else is interested in joining the Patreon $2 a month gets you access to the Patreon Discord chat and we're going to be running some Patreon only um, slow grow stuff as well as 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 well as wider community stuff as well. 
and I'll be sharing some of the progress that people are doing. As people's finished um, work, well, I'll take my hand off the camera there. People's finished work, um, but I'll be sharing that from the from the Patreon group. Really, it's kind of hard to to try and pull together all of the different Facebook stuff. I've tried getting people to do hashtag stuff, and um, unless unless you do it as a separate post, it doesn't pick up hashtags if they're if they're a comment in another post. Facebook's just really awkward for kind of highlighting all that kind of stuff. So what I'm doing is as a, as a benefit really to, to Patreons, I'll be doing a little bit more with them. Um, but I'll still be making them um, some of those painting challenges and slow grows and stuff like that. They'll still be open to a wider audience. Um, Holmes, you saying all all celeb freebies probably. I'll tell you what, mate. The the, br the brushes I use were all bought and paid for by my own fair hands, mate. Um, I've had that wide brush. I've had that big Citadel brush, that wide one there, for absolutely years. I can't even remember when I bought that one. It's just been looked after. Um, Spider Lord said the boys makes me sad because I read and loved the original comics. Ah, so I was tempted to go the other way, mate, because I love the TV series so much. I was tempted to pick up the comics, but uh, I assume from what you're saying there, there's not there's not that much, um, or it's, it doesn't cross over quite as as much as you would like. Am I right in saying? I think obviously they always take some liberties a little bit when they have to, or, or poetic license when they come to TV. But oops, splashed my head off the camera there. Um, Lovecraft Country, that was the one I couldn't remember the name there. Lovecraft Country is the one I started watching. Um, um, and yes, I watched that first episode. It was, a, it was, a, it, I think Tony, you were telling me it was a bit of a slow, slow build up. And it was a little bit slow. I couldn't, I couldn't quite understand it at first where it was going. But um, yeah, once once they got out out into the wild a little bit into that forest, I won't spoil it for anybody that's not seen it. It really started to kick in a little bit there, and, and it definitely made me want to watch the next episode. It was just late. Um, I think it was late at night. I was watching it, so I kind of thought I'd put it off to the next day. But like I say, I've not really had a chance to um, just sort of um, put it on in the background while I'm doing something else. Um, I've been, like I say, I've been filming and editing and stuff all week. Peter saying, does Andy pay for anything hobby related anymore? I do, mate. I still buy all my paints, all my brushes. I still buy all the bits and pieces I need to. I, I, I bought my Indomitus set. What I'm painting now is my own, is my own spends. I just, um, if anything comes to me for like review and stuff like that, a lot of the time, it's not necessarily something I would, I would always kind of, um, sort of buy myself. It sometimes just comes to me kind of to, to have a look at and I need to know what what to do with some of that stuff really as well because as, as good as it is I know that half the time it's not it's not always going to see the table um the table a lot because there's always something else new coming down the coming down the track something else new to play and something else new to paint so maybe I'll start to uh, look at maybe do some Patreon giveaways for that kind of stuff Patreon's a bit funny about doing giveaways because it can be classed as, as gambling when people have to pay to enter if you like so there's some really weird rules about giveaways on patreon although everybody seems to ignore them anyway what was his uh goober palooza is a set of five gloom spike git characters that's where i've heard the name mate i knew i'd heard it but i didn't have a clue what it was uh maze and sculpts can be played as allies in war cry ah nice one mate nice one mike g saying it's a little as it went off the top of my screen obviously mike g i'll find that again um it's a little bit Twilight Zone-ish, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I, that was kind of the vibe I got from it a little bit. Um, I mean, it picked up pretty fast once they um, actually got out on the road and stuff in the car. Um, but up until that point, I just, I really, I couldn't quite see where it was going. It felt like just some kind of sort of drama, kind of, you know, a, I was going to say like Downton Abbey kind of thing, but like all I mean is kind of like period, period drama type piece thing. It just felt a bit like, all oh, right, okay, we'll see where this goes. I mean, I knew from speaking to you lot that there was more to it, but you're right, it was a little bit kind of a bit. You had to stick with it at first. I think it's 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 done really well though. Um, Pomsi said, "Have you seen the King, King seen Kingdom on Netflix? Korean zombie thing. I've seen the first episode. Look serious. No, I haven't made the the problem is, is a lot of stuff I watch on Netflix tends to be uh, either stuff I'll watch with my missus." Or it tends to be stuff that I just put on in the background and I don't always give it like 100% attention. So any forum, uh, like subtitle stuff or anything like that, as much as I'll enjoy them, I just never really get a chance to watch them. Because um, what I'm doing is I'm, ju I'm just putting them on and 
partially like listening really rather than uh, actually watching them most of the time that's why I, I watch a lot of like do- documentaries and uh, and things like that because essentially the, the visual aspect of it is 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 less important and it's more about people like talking about stuff so uh no mate not seen that yet um dirk saying is that a new thing that they just released three episodes at once of this of the series one episode a week or is that just because of the rona it wouldn't surprise me mate if it's if because of kind of because of coronavirus, they're not. They, they, a lot of the TV series haven't been getting made, and it's. Um, I read somewhere basically like Netflix was starting to worry a little bit about about how do they hang on to people's subscriptions when they haven't got as much new stuff coming. So it wouldn't surprise me if they're trying to. It's one of the reasons why, like, sort of Disney Plus, um, spaced the Mandalorian out as well, so that basically people didn't just sign up for a for a free five day trial or a seven day trial, whatever it was, and then binge watch the season. And then never and they basically cancel it and not watch the rest. Um, and then, funnily enough, now the Mandalorian, the full series is up. They've, they've canned off all those free trials. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's maybe it, it might be like a new plan, or it might be just purely about um, um, trying to trying to spread it out and keep keep people subscribed. The thing is, is it's on Amazon, and like I, I pay for like a year in advance with an Amazon Prime subscription. So maybe it's just about kind of sort of padding it out and making it last a bit longer. Um, Jim Zorms, greetings all, stuck at work, but hoping to get some Ultramarines later. Nice one, mate. Once I, I'm, I'm determined to get my Necrons finished before I go back and start on my Ultramarines. I want to, ch- obviously I've got all the, all the Ultramarines painted from the uh, Dark Imperium box, which I kind of, uh, I set myself a bit of a challenge. If I hadn't got them painted before Indomitus come out, I wasn't buying the Indomitus set. So that was a, a little bit of a kind of like a, a, a little mental kind of, um, sort of challenge for myself so that was what i did i knuckled down and got them all done um and then i thought if i if i start on those because i've been taking a bit more time with the uh uh with the ultramarines with like with my airbrush and stuff um i've been sort of being a bit more trying trying to do them a bit of a better job to be fair take a bit more time with them so i thought if i start with them it's going to take me a little while longer oops too much silver there it's going to take me a little while longer so i want to just i'm pretty much kind of just dry brushing and washing these necrons really i mean they're, they're the kind of models that you can do that with um and then i'll get all the necrons finished and then i'll go back and do the uh do my ultramarines um and uh, and get them get them on the table at some point It'd be nice to do a bit of a kind of a like a some kind of small 500 point battle report or something like that maybe once once i kind of get my head around the rules Tom's he's saying, no, he's in there with all the companies these days. It's all paid promotion. I tell you what, mate, if it was paid promotion, I'd be making a lot more money than I am now. That's for sure. Um, I could do with some paid promotion, if I'm honest. Um, but no, I've kind of, I've set my, I've set my stall out now, mate. It's, uh, that's, that's why, that's why Patreon is mega important to the kind of, to the future of this. Because I'm not, I'm not doing paid promotion. I see the amount of people that are doing it. And um, I'm just trying to do something different. I, I just honestly don't think you can give a, you can give a completely unbiased opinion when somebody's paid you to to kind of to look at to promote their products. You 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 I I just I feel like you there is definitely kind of some element of um I'm going to say I'm going I'm going to be positive. These people are paying me um like I, I want them to pay me again in the future, and I just think that as soon as I go down that road, really, it's almost like a point of no return. There's you don't really come you don't really come back from um paid promotions at that point certainly i'll make a lot more money but i'm not in this for the money i just i just need enough to to kind of to to keep it going and make it sustainable really um peter saying i batch paint a lot sometimes up to 30 models i think that's a bit too much for me mate. i think i'd go a little bit uh i think i'd probably go a bit bananas I, although to be fair when i was doing my kings of war army doing those big units of dwarfs i think i was doing about i might have been doing about 20 at a time but then to be fair they're pretty small models so it's not exactly um not exactly too much time consuming. Um Tony says I hate back painting with a passion. Thankfully I don't have to do it, so I don't worry about it. Yeah, I mentioned this today in, in our Patreon group really, and, I, and what I was saying was I think everybody at some point should try to, to paint a model quickly by like and I don't mean like rush it and mess it up. What I mean is just try like sort of doing a few shortcuts. Like don't tidy it up all the way through kind of thing I, i'm terrible for keep trying to like tidy the model up as i go and um, like just get base coats on 
stick stick a wash like an agrax wash over the top of it maybe dry brush a bit of highlights or something afterwards and just compare it to see how it turns out you'd be really surprised um like if you're like an army painter or if you're if you're painting really just to play games you'll be surprised that there's, there's generally very little difference um in quality really or certainly not enough that you would justify taking like five hours a model over kind of like 20 minutes a model or something um but yeah if, if you're just like like tony if you're just somebody that likes to likes to paint and, and it's you, painting is the enjoyment if you like painting is the whole thing and you want to try and do your best job every time kind of thing um yeah then then don't worry about doing it that way but but for those that are trying to like like saying i'm a really slow painter i never get anything finished i, I like to play with fully painted minis but i can never play the game because i don't i don't get it done honestly I, I would just just take take an old model or something like that and just try like think about just doing it in the most simple way don't think about edge highlighting don't think about trying to kind of wet blend and all this kind of stuff just try and do it like with a much quicker scheme and see see how you kind of get on it it, it was a bit of a uh, like a, a light bulb moment for me when i was kind of starting to paint and um, to try and speed things up and, and get my output up um i was really surprised actually i mean obviously there is a there's definitely a decline in quality it goes without saying but like what i'm doing here tonight like a couple of like like sort of an overbrush and a dry brush i'm kind of um i'm washing these over now with them um, skeleton hard contrast which kind of gives them a bit of a brings brings the kind of the bronziness back and, and gives a little bit of shading as well um and, and then just kind of picking out some bits of highlights little bits for the eye to focus on like and i'm i'm more than happy with that like I don't really care what anybody else thinks about it. I'm not entering any competitions with them. They just they just look good enough on the table. They look good from a distance. They look, you know, that that whole thing that people say about it's good from three foot because that's roughly how far you'll be away from um from actually painting. Uh... Oh, I just um. It might not have come through yet. Um, somebody just edited their Patreon pledge. I'm not going to say anything about it. There we go. <laughs> Phil Millward just um, he's just edited his pledge. He's just upped it from uh, from five dollars to uh, to ten. Thank you very much, mate. That's hugely appreciated. Uh, I really, really appreciate that. Um, like I like I say, I'm not I'm not trying to get rich from this, but but I do need to see some kind of like um some kind of return if you like I, i'm i'm putting full-time hours into this more more than full-time hours um and at some point in the future it needs to start to be able to kind of to cover cover some bills and things but i, I always knew it wouldn't from day one so that like that, that was why i've been saving like mad basically to kind of to build up a buffer but that, but that buffer doesn't last forever if you like so the quicker i can get there um the more comfortable i, I become in there uh, and doing this as a, as a job so thank you very much to everybody that that's not only the people that support me now those of you that supported in the past but no longer do um and those of you that support me in the future but but don't do it yet i, I really am uh, hugely appreciative of everybody and of course the the continued support of those that do it now um yeah so i, I i'm just happy just to just to get things completed and get them on the table um i, I do cut corners i i like nobody would ever say like like oh my god that like Andy's a hell of a painter kind of thing, but then that's like that's not where I'm, that's not what I'm trying to achieve. I'm just trying to achieve painted minis, and that that's enough for me. I don't need to be I don't need to be praised for my painting. I'm not I'm not I'm not looking for people to tell me I'm doing an amazing job. All I want to do is paint them to a standard that I'm happy with, and I I will always preach that to people. Um. You're only trying to impress one person in these stuff, unless you're a commission painter, uh, and then that's a different kettle of fish. But essentially, you're only trying to impress yourself. You only need to be happy with your own work. Um, um, Ian says, I've gone 60 to 120 models batch painting before. Wow, mate. That is commitment to the cause. Uh, and while it gets things done faster, it can get a bit soul crushing at times. Yeah, if if it's too if it's too many mate at once, you do end up starting to feel a little bit like you're um, in a sweatshop mate in some kind of um, far east production line, um, and and it stops becoming about. It depends on how you're looking at it. If 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 you enjoy the painting and the painting process, and actually speeds less irrele less relevant to you, you don't mind how long it takes, and actually you just find the painting calming and relaxing. I would never suggest kind of blasting through things with batch painting, but if if you're the kind of person 
that just wants to get them painted because you want to play with painted minis um honestly it's it's worth giving it a try and, and even if you're not just to try and like to try and see it by doing it a quicker way by trying to like sh do a few shortcuts you might actually find like that, that some some bits actually look better or you find that they look exactly the same and, and you can you can cut a couple of steps out of the way you normally do stuff um it's just like it's like putting contrast paints over metallics and stuff like that like it's it's it, it's not like a a genius idea or anything like that it looks really effective i mean these guys look a little bit kind of like battle worn and hardened and stuff like that it's like they're not meant to be kind of uh awesome kind of sort of brand new factory out, out of the factory kind of robots and stuff so as i mentioned last week what i'll probably do is get to a point where i just I kind of just get these all on the table and then at some point i might come back and do a little bit of kind of a little bit of battle damage or a bit of weathering like kind of by painting some scratches and stuff like that maybe a little bit of edge highlighting just to, to pick bits out but i just want to get them done i want to get them on the table and get them played um and and because of the way i'm doing these they're not really like glued to the bases if you like that's why you've seen them bouncing around a little bit um because when you do these kind of bases um it's nice to actually remove the model and, and do the base properly and then glue the model down afterwards you get a, a much nicer finish to the base um daniel engel good evening to you mate uh spider lord saying i'm an incredibly slow paint i need to learn the weight of the airbrush you'd be surprised me whoops sorry you'd be surprised me airbrushes don't always speed things up they do if you're doing like a, like an army like like if you're doing marines for example and like all of your army are going to be like yellow or blue or something like that you can really blast through things a lot faster and get some really nice effects by just like airbrushing the main color and then coming in and kind of tidying them up a little bit and doing bits and pieces. But in general, like if you're doing, like if you're doing individual model for something like Wild West Exodus or Infinity or like Malifaux, that kind of stuff, there's unless you're really handy with an airbrush, um, there's not a lot of use for them to be fair on that kind of stuff. Um, until you get really good, like if you're kind of like um, Angel Herales kind of level, and then to be fair, when you're at that level, really. It, you're not doing them any faster. You're just you're just doing them to a different quality, like a different style, if you like. Um, Tony saying, uh, Steve Evans, sorry. Good evening, Steve Evans. How are you doing, sir? Nice to see you in, matey. Um, Tony saying, struggle with an airbrush to start with, but now it's a lifesaver. I think for yeah, priming and um, sort of zenithal, zenithal highlighting, under, underpainting and stuff like that, I definitely find they're, um, they're great. And I and I do use them a lot for like vehicles, terrain, anything that's big, like painting tanks and stuff. Like there's there's nothing better than there than using an airbrush for that kind of stuff. But um, they're de they're a tool, they're, they're like like anything else, and they've got their place and they they do it they do an absolutely fantastic job when they're used in the right places. Uh, Peter Coomer says I find batch painting okay for the bigger surfaces like uniforms. I tend to break a batch up into smaller lots, five to ten models. Once I get the detail stuff. Yeah, I I kind of I tend to stick to about ten max, mate. Any more than that, and um, I find it's a bit more, um, a bit more of a chore. But to be fair, when I'm painting on a stream like this, I feel like I'm kind of like sitting talking to somebody. To be fair, and um, it's actually sometimes it's actually quite nice just to just to plow through them and almost use the use use the chatting to you lot as a distraction, really, from from batch painting. I mean that in the nicest possible way. You're not just a distraction, folks. Um, Peter says I'm base painting four marines at the moment. Does that count as batch painting? Anything more than one mate is batch painting. Um, Peter says the Middle Earth strategy battle game is a great rule set. I'm not a fan of it in the slightest, mate. I, I've got the rules and I found them uh, not not great at all, actually, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, but then again, I, like I say, the, the theme, like the theme of the game, I, I'm not a fan of the films and stuff like that. Um, I'm sure like, that they're fine, but like. I'm not like a huge fan of them or anything like that. I just I just didn't find the rules that that intuitive really. I felt like I was searching over about forty different pages looking to see how charges worked. Um, it's probably fine if somebody can show you, but when you're trying to learn from the rule book, in fact, I I made a video about it. I th I found it so bad. Um, Yoakum says I must have been bad hearing. Don't think the sound is strange. Maybe a little bit low. I think it's just the mic. The microphone maybe might be just a little bit far away, mate. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll I'll try turning up. Let me try turning up the gain on the microphone and see if I can help it with that. 
that might help a little bit um that's not the right button i don't want to be pressing that one bear with me folks and i'll, I'll try and improve it a little bit um where the filters gain we'll try to turn that up a little bit i'll just keep talking here while i'm turning up the gain oh that's peaking a little bit there is that any better folks let me let me know if that's if that's helping in the chat um that's just i'll just turn it up a little bit it might it might make it like worse actually if it's got any background noise um John said, I look really excited about this naval game. Something different to paint to. No eyes, I presume. Yeah, there's there's no eyes on ships, mate. That's that's for that's for sure. So I'll be honest, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it too, mate. Obviously, like I say, I, I know a little bit more than than most, and what I know about it, um, I'm uh, I'm really happy about. So yeah, look looking forward to finding out much more as well, and sort of um, looking forward to everybody else finding out much more as well, so I can kind of start to talk about it with people. Um, six in the head there saying I envy you because your cheating looks ten times better and faster than my cheating the thing is mate it's like even just dry brushing and stuff like the, there's, there's a skill to dry brushing if you like like it still takes practice if you put too much on you're basically just like lumping the paint on um, if you don't like kind of wiping off, off on, on uh, like a tissue or whatever if you if you, you can like get some really nice effects from dry brushing um and, and like stippling on paints and things like that. It's less about cheating really, and it's more about just using the most efficient method method to achieve the, the standard that you're trying to do. Um, Daniel says, quarantining for the next two weeks. Stepstone got COVID at his job. Um, hobby with gloves on or not to hobby? That's the question. Hobby with gloves on? Why, why would you have to hobby with your gloves on, mate? Surely you can, um, you can just take them off to, if you're quarantining, you can surely just there's only you touching your hobby stuff, isn't there? Unless you're unless you're using somebody else's stuff. Um, Jimmy's saying I've not noticed any issues with the sound either, but I do have a wee bit of tinnitus. <laughs> you're my perfect perfect kind of viewer, mate. <laughs> you're saving me money. I don't I don't have to buy a better microphone if you can't hear it anyway. Uh, um, Tony saying sound is fine there as well. Steve said I hate how people sneer at dry brushing. Yeah, I I think I mean I know Palms is just joking tonight, but like um. Yeah, some some people are a bit snobby about that kind of stuff, and at the end of the day, like it's just putting paint on the model in a different way. Um, and I, I actually read something online the other day, which was I think it was on Twitter, and it was in fact well, just while that's drying a little bit, we switch back to the main camera for a bit. And it was um, it was somebody complaining that they were absolutely sick of how um, Games Workshops like heavy metal painting system has basically been pushed. To people as if that's the only way to paint stuff and i was thinking that's i can kind of see the point but by the same stretch even that's like a little bit snobby like no nobody has to paint that way and if you're a brand new painter to be honest like games workshop showing you almost a step-by-step -step way to do it yes they're trying to sell their products but if it helps new people to get started and, and build up enough confidence to then kind of go off piste and try your own styles and try something different then all, all power to them like I know Games Workshop take a lot of bashing and, and a lot of the stuff they, they deserve the bashing for, but um, in this instance, they, they, they're they just bringing new people into the hobby. I, I, I can't see how trying to get people started is, is a bad thing. And I think they were talking about like this, um, like edge highlighting on all of the models and stuff. And like, I, I, I'm inspired by the paint jobs they do, but I don't feel like I have to live up to them. I don't feel like I have to copy that way of painting, if you like. I'll take the bits I like, but... Like I'm, I don't feel kind of that 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 is the way to paint. For me, the the way to paint is the way you paint. What makes you you feel comfortable and and what you like to achieve at the other side of it. Um. Oh yeah, Pomsy saying there was joking. I don't think I'm any cheating. However, you get your models fine. Yeah, I thought I I assumed you were cheating. I'm just having a laugh, mate. And I know you well enough to know when you're joking on. Um, Simon saying they look awesome. I have an idea for the Spectre to match with my Transformer theme Asterians. What oh, I thought of seeing that, mate. If you get them done. Steve said, I wasn't talking about anyone in particular, especially in this group, but I've encountered it elsewhere. I've encountered it elsewhere as well, mate. I remember going to a Malifaux tournament years ago and somebody saying to me, can I have a look at your models? They're quite nice, them. And then um, and when he picked them up and looked at them, he went, uh, do, do you just do these mainly with washers? And I was like, yeah, pretty much. Just kind of prime them white. Um, like, uh, I, th or I think what I did was, yeah, prime them white, wash them with null oil, or whatever it was called before it was null oil, I think it's always been called null oil. 
Um, so that basically you get like black into the recesses and then white like on the high spots. And then I was using basically basically using G GW washes a little bit like contrast paints and um, to just to kind of like um, to wash in different things. And I, I was doing like I think I had a showgirls crew at the time, and I did all of like the dresses and stuff with their uh, with washes, and it just kind of like kind of sneered at me and put them down again. And I thought, you know what it is. You thought they looked nice until you picked them up and got very close and found out I'd used washers. Like, surely that's the point. Like, they look good enough on the table. Once you pick them up close to your eyes, like, everybody's model's going to have some faults with them. Um, but, yeah, I, I just find it strange that people, like, just turn their nose up at other people's stuff. Like, you, you, you might not like it. You might not even think they've done a very good job of it, but it doesn't matter. Unless, unless you've paid them to paint your minis, like, your opinion doesn't really count. <laughs> that's the way I say it. Um, DFC and the boys series um, cannot uh, oh, replicate the comics. I think they said where did that one go. Um, where did that go? Well, this chat is lively, lively, lively. Um, bloody hell! I can't even find where it was. Yeah, can't, can't replicate the comic due to the adult content. There's quite a lot of co adult content in the TV series, to be fair, though, mate. It's not exactly pulling any punches with the language, that's for sure. Um, Andrew Fairbanks says, don't worry, y'all, I'm here. Nice to see you, mate. Nice to see Peter Stockdale in as well. Yoakum saying, dry brushing is an art on its own. I envy those who can dry brush neatly. I mess up when I try. Too much paint in the brush. I tell you what, if, if anybody hasn't seen it, please check out the Artist Opus YouTube channel. Um... Byron, who basically owns the Artist Opus company, has been um, doing some videos about how to use the dry brushes to get some really nice effects. If anybody thinks dry brushing is cheating, go and watch his videos. It will completely change the way you view dry brushing. Um, Tony's chatting to Steve there. Um, Dirk says, only cheaters say dry brushing isn't cheating. <laughs> um... Palmsy said, it's, it is dubbed, but oh, but yeah, I get you. I like background viewing. I didn't realise it was dubbed, mate. I thought I assumed it was um, it was just subtitles. Um, Jason said, I don't see how people can use Netflix or Hulu for background noise. I would be compelled to watch anything that's on, even if it's a movie I've seen 50 times. No, I, I tend, mate, to... Like, that's why I say that's why I tend to watch a lot of like documentaries or stand-up comedians or that kind of stuff. More stuff that I'm more interested in what they're saying than what's actually happening on stream. I would never sit and try and watch a movie or something like that. Um, but depending on what I'm doing, if I'm just doing kind of like mindless, kind of just like building models or something like that, I'll kind of I'll still be able to watch stuff. Um, and and as I'm sure you all know, I don't enjoy building models, <laughs> so I need some distraction. Um, Andrew saying, yeah, dry brush is one of those things to look good. You go over it eight or nine times with next to nothing. Of course, there's plenty of instances where going heavy works well too. Yeah, and that's what I mean about the difference between kind of like an overbrush, which is more a kind of to, to paint it as opposed to kind of to highlight it uh, and a dry brush. Uh, Peter said, I don't get very good results with dry brushing, so I dip the model in paint and brush the excess away with a dry brush. <laughs> Steve said, I use the washing area I've dry brushed. It helps to blend the transitions. Yeah, 100%, mate. I mean, it's that, that, that's kind of part of the thing. I, like, I, there was a, a mate who used to kind of, used to knock out AOS armies in like a weekend, and I could never understand how he was so fast um, until he kind of explained to me. He just basically, like, he just didn't take the care that I thought he did. He just like he he'd learned some tips and kind of tricks to to speed it up and to and to only concentrate on the bits that people's eyes are drawn to, if you like. Um, Mister Spooky Thing, good evening, mate. He says I had no internet connection there for a bit. It was scary, better late than never. <laughs> You're always welcome, mate, no matter what time. Andrew saying all all so pushing as light as possible. It's something I really struggle with myself. Yeah, you you're literally just like dragging across the top. That's why things like these just like sort of. Whoop. Oh, just drop, drop that in the water. Um, things like these, just cheap. This was like a pound makeup brush from a, um, from a pound shop. They're just like, they're like really nice. I mean, I, I do have some nice dry brushes as well. I've got the um, I've got the Artist Opus dry brushes as well. But if you watch on their videos, they, they, these are really good for kind of like almost like stippling and as opposed to a normal dry brush in motion, you can get some really nice effects with those. Um, 
John Essel says, isn't it good from two metres at the moment? <laughs> yeah, never mind three foot. <laughs> Even my models are now painted look good from two metres. Uh, Peter says, uh, did you see what colour gold you were using? Um... Yeah, I was getting a bit paranoid about a cellmate. The gold I've used, mate, isn't actually a gold, it's a bronze. It, it, it might look a little bit different on screen, but it's it's Sycorax bronze, which is a, a Citadel layer paint. And then I've been going over the top of it with the contrast um, skeleton hoard. Um, and it looks a bit bright when I'm first doing it because the contrast paint's obviously really wet. But that's basically, once, once they're all finished, that's essentially... Uh, how they kind of turn out so it's a bit of like a kind of a a light dirty bronze kind of color if you like I'll try and maybe turn it at the back it's le it's less goldy in the flesh so uh yeah that's that's what they are um Pomsy saying all jokes aside i'm inspired by the way you finish models you have to just i, I have to get them done mate if, I, if i'm painting stuff to kind of put on a on a camera and things like the way I used to paint, like I, I can paint to a decent standard, but it takes me forever. And every now and again, I will just kind of pick up a model and just take my time and like just just enjoy the painting. Really, I'm not gonna see if I've got anything over there from like when I used to paint like that, and, and just enjoy it really. But like it's it's few and far between at the minute. I think that's what I might do soon is just have something as a, a nice little project, just just for me really. Um. Spider Lord says it's got to that stage for me. Just got to get stuff finished. Yeah, I'm I'm the same. I, I get like I've I've said this loads of times, and I'm sure people are sick of hearing it now. But I get more enjoyment from having something finished than I do from the process now. Uh, Peter says about cutting corners. Remember, someone once said Qual quantity has a quality of its own. There is that, mate. Yeah. Um, Spider Lord says I have more to paint than I have finished in a lifetime. Yeah, I think you and me both, mate. Um, Zingbo says, you'd be surprised. My hack efforts get some nice comments online, and I'm sure your output is going to be at least as good as mine. Anything that's painted with some passion will be well received. Hello, Zingbo, by the way. And, and I think you're right, actually. I think sometimes we're our own worst critics. Like, even psychologically, we know we're cutting some corners and we're kind of, we're painting things fast. And I think we, we maybe all, like, they do them down ourselves saying, I know I could do better, but like, I just want to get them done. It's when other people see them and they, they have no idea how you've painted them. They, they might think you've taken like five or six hours per model. Um, and then they'll see, oh, they're really nice. And you just think, actually, like, you know, it's, like, it's nice to get some nice comments, but that's not really what it's about. But yeah, I know what you mean, mate. Steve saying, lockdowns really helped me to focus on getting stuff done. And I've fallen in love with playing games with painted armies. I love playing games with painted armies, mate. I very rarely play games without painted minis, really. Um, it, it's one of the reasons I don't play nearly as much as I would like to. Um, but that's just a personal thing. Like, if, if my opponent hasn't got a painted army, that doesn't bother me. It's just I get enjoyment from playing a game with, with painted minis, if you like. Um, Dave saying, are you a rusty or a clean chrome or a middling of those two Necrons, man? I used to like, I mean, the ones I painted in the past when I was going to start a Necron army were just really kind of high shine, kind of silver, really. They were like the, the classic Necron, not like dirty and grubby. Um, but with these ones, I just think like they're already battle worn and kind of damaged and stuff. Like some of these, if I can find one to kind of show you on screen, um, is there one that I can kind of show you? I think this one here. Like this one here. Let me go to here, if I can show you this one. I don't know if you can kind of see it, but all of the, like, around the eye and stuff is all kind of scree uh, like a big scar and like damage and stuff. And some of them have like their guts hanging out the bottom and stuff. Um, f For me, I, like, I think these, these need to be a bit kind of like roughed up and damaged. Um, Peterson, to my eyes, my painting has improved a bit this year as I'm trying to improve just for the challenge. The, that's, the, that's a good enough reason to try and improve me. And I, and I think the other thing is that people never take into account just painting more often. Like coming to every coming to every week's Wednesday hobby hangout and painting something every week, you will get better just by the repetition of doing the thing again and again and again. It's, it's when people paint quite sporadically is when they tend not to really improve. Um... Spider Lord says, weathering uh, hides a multitude of sins. That it does, my friend. Um, Jason said, did Andy just cut the cheese? I think what I did, I think I just, uh, I did something, I didn't fart, that's for sure. But I definitely, I think when I dropped my paintbrush, I think I banged against the microphone. Um, um, 
Where are we up to here? Tony's saying, nice, I want to try some colour shift with my Dracaria army. Not stuck against this, didn't realise you get a shout out during the show. You are more than welcome. You and the Black Chatters have really helped me enjoy my hobby again. Yeah, that, that's kind of, that's what I'm planning to do for the next ones, mate, is what I'm going to do for the next kind of painting challenge. It's not going to be a slow grow, because I, I don't want to do it like over another eight months or something. They kind of lose steam, and especially with the coronavirus and lockdowns and people not getting games as much as possible and things all over, up in the air. I don't want to sort of pitch too far ahead. So I'll probably be doing like shorter painting challenges. They'll be based, they might be like, say, maybe six to eight weeks, maybe two months. Um, they'll be based around shorter, smaller kind of like warband type size games, skirmish game sizes. They'll be based around maybe some sort of like like topics or subjects. Um, so for example, the one we're talking about at the minute in the in the um, in the Patreon group is around like kind of cyberpunk Necromunda esque. So if you want to paint a Necromunda um, gang, it's a perfect opportunity. If you've got like core space stuff that you want to paint, that'll kind of fit with the challenge as well. If you just want to pick up some nice minis from different kind of sellers and and paint up maybe some Judge Dread minis or something like that, all that kind of stuff fits within this um, this kind of subject if you like. So. Um, and, and even if it doesn't really fit in the subject, it doesn't really matter. The idea is to inspire you to paint and to finish something, really. So, yeah, that's what I'll kind of do. And then what I'll do is I'll use the pictures from the Patreon folks because it's dead easy to kind of to gather all those pictures together in one place from Patreon, uh, from Discord, rather. And uh, and we'll do a little bit of a, like a 15-minute like a shout one Monday night live stream when we finish the challenge and kind of show them off as well. It's nice to kind of show what the community is doing. It's IBC and I once batch painted 129 goblins in a line. I am well behind on the chat here. <laughs> uh, wow, 120, mate. Phil saying nearly finished his interceptors now. Got a bit more done. Nice one, mate. Mark was saying I think it's worse. I'll tell you what, I a bit more hiss and crackle now since I turned the air. Turned the. I'll tell you what I'll do. I will. Uh, I'll go back and turn it down a touch again. It's because I've turned the gain up really. So, but I'll tell you what, this is the last time I'm doing anything with it. It doesn't. Uh, it is what it is now for the rest of the night. Um, there's 65 people in the chat. I can't imagine it's too bad. Otherwise, I'm thinking most of them would have disappeared by now. So um, there, we'll try. It. We'll try it there. That'll do. But yeah, that's the last time I'm. I'm that's the last time I'm changing it. Um, <laughs> Pomsy says too loud. Peter Nicholas says perfect sound. <laughs> Just York, I'm saying really strange because I can't hear the background noise, but the sound is higher now. I, t I turned the volume up, mate. That's what I was doing. Um, Spider Lord says makeup brushes for dry brush, game changer. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't know why we didn't kind of think of this years ago, really. Blizzard says got done with the Blight Lords now, so we're going to um, batch paint a Halfling Blitzball team. Um, Jacob saying, oh man, a new naval game by Manic. I was going to try a starter of Black Sails, but might hold off to see what Manic is coming out with. Yeah, I unless kind of um, what's it called that kind of Napoleonic stuff. If that if that's really your thing, um, is it not? Is it Napoleonic stuff? Kind of like it's like, it's like it, is it the early eighteen hundreds? I think it's set in. If that kind of stuff is your is your bag, then obviously try out Black Sails. But if you're more of a fantasy gamer, it's definitely worth hanging on. Um, Spider Lord said, "I'm still a bit. We can't get Blitzball in the UK." Yeah, to be honest, mate, you can't get Blitzball in the US at the minute. It's completely sold out. Um, Tiberius saying, nothing, no, no such thing as cheating. It's about finding an effect for what you want. I, I agree, mate. Um, Krabby saying, evening all. Apologies for his tardiness. You will be, uh, you'll be. you have a little um, doc, uh, little mark against your name, mate. Um, Peter saying, spicy, spicy. Uh, Dave says, the heavy metal full Monty way of painting is very layer intensive. It is, mate, but like it's essentially that's like they're trying to show off the miniatures to the best of their ability, really. Like, um, and and they do a fantastic job of it. Um, it's not really meant for everybody to to replicate, if you like. Um, Mark was saying GW painting process was great for me when I started. I quickly moved away from the crazy edge highlighting and the use of washes. Yeah, but I think it, it, it basically gives everybody like a starting point, doesn't it? That's the, that was the point, really. Um, Ty Bruce is saying on dry brushing the orthonic orth film, filming miniature on Lord of the Rings movies was dry brushed. There you go, mate. A lot of kind of movie set stuff is dry brushed. Um, Frantic saying, hi all, just start with four Space Marines tonight, putting down the base coat. It's a bit relaxing, to be honest, when you base coat and don't care which way the paint goes, you're going to touch it up later. That's the point. That's one thing. Like Everybody can learn from that. 
you don't need to be super accurate just putting down base colors. You can always tidy them up. It's one of the things that I is a downfall really of contrast paints is you do have to be super tidy with them. Um, Jason said, I stopped my local GW shop and was surprised by all the different kind of paints they had. What the heck is a technical paint? Technical paints are the ones that kind of give like a, a certain kind of effect. So the ones on these bases, let me go back to here. So these kind of Agrelin Earth um, bases that look like kind of like damaged cracked earth. That's that's done with a technical paint. If you see some of the stuff that looks like um, like verdigris and oxidized kind of um, paint and stuff, that's a technical paint. All those kind of stuff. Um, Wet brushing is cheating as well now. Um, Kieran's in as well. Says hello everyone. Mini swap done. Putting the final bits of the new video. Uh, of course, it's going to jump off my screen there at that point. Put the final again. Mm, where was it, Kieran? Um, yeah, it was in look um, and into local friendly local gamer store hobby competition. Maybe I'll hobby something for me soon. Yeah, it gets like that, mate, doesn't it? Um, a bit more chat. Andrew Fairbanks said, I've seen a fair few of Duncan's figures at the cafe in Dallas. Great from six foot out, but up close you can see some definite lines. Yeah, and I and I think that's the thing. I think people kind of forget that that um, that it's like it's it's, it's they don't have to be perfect um, all the time. Right, so um, as you can see, I basically just kind of went over these with a heavy dry brush, um, a light dry brush of silver, a wash of contrast paint. Now I'm gonna gonna go in with um, with black and basically kind of like pick out the like the, like the gun and, uh, and that kind of stuff. Really, the stuff that I don't want to be this bronze color. So I'm just coming in with normal um, Abaddon black or Abaddon black. Um, Dave says Cyril Sneer is going to judge your minis like it, it was a murder trial. <laughs> yeah, Cyril Sneer. That takes me back, mate. Um, cool. That brush will do perfectly. Uh, put something to put my Now I'm back from outer space. What I miss? Uh, not really. We're just just chatting on, mate. Mark Ross says the comics are R eighteen. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, I, I like the the TV show is certainly not like sort of PG thirteen rated, is it? Um, so I don't think it's. Um, I, th I think we're 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 away from the point now where where they where they re where they think they have to turn sort of like comic books into um, into kids TV shows really because they think that that's that's who's going to watch it. Um, I mean, if you think of things like Deadpool and stuff now, um, like there's there's plenty of kind of like eighteen rated um, sort of adaptions of comic book stuff now, so. Um, Uh, Simon Parfit says oh sorry Krabby's saying I love a bit of dry brush mate it's an f effect you can't get any other way I don't know why it gets any stick personally yeah I agree mate Simon saying on the topic of TV shows just mainlined Cobra Kai on Netflix both seasons getting that Karate Kid fix and realising that Daniel the Karate Kid is actually the arsehole <laughs> I watched the original um, Cobra Kai series when it was first on YouTube because that was where it was originally and um, I watched it back then and then obviously I've watched the second season uh, series now as well since it's been on uh, on um, I think it's on Netflix, isn't it? And I've enjoyed it. It's been good. It's been really good. So, and I'm looking forward to the third series. But yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of funny, like isn't it? It's um, there was always this kind of um, sort of theory or fa fan theory. That um that Daniel was the cheat, and actually Johnny was um was hard done by, and he was constantly bullied and stuff. There's there's a, somebody's made a YouTube video basically like, like basically like all the clips from the original Karate Kid film, like, and if you if you assume that like that Daniel is the bad guy and Johnny is innocent, like you you kind of watch it in a completely different light. It's almost as if like Daniel is is bullying him. Uh, it's quite funny actually. I remember watching that a number of years ago before the Cobra Kai uh, TV series ever got made. Um, right, we're just kind of getting in behind the gun here and just painting, painting these bits. Painting over metallics is uh, is sometimes not very fun either. Sometimes I have to do it in in batches really and kind of touch them up. So. 
Um, Spider Lord says, writing short story, watching stream, and Freddy versus Jason on Netflix with the missus in the background. Multitasking for the win. That is, mate. I don't know how your brain hasn't popped yet. Um, Tony said, I use water paint method a lot, which is almost exclusively wash. Yeah, it's, um, like you say, mate, it's just, they're just, they're just to tools for jobs. They're not, they're like, it's got, it's not, nothing has to be, uh, there's no prescribed method. You know, like, however, however you paint is however you paint. And um, people shouldn't be so snobby about it, really. Just um, come out here. I'm just checking something out on, on my other my other models as well to see how I've how I've painted those weapons. So, um, Steve Bonner, evening, Steve. How are you doing, fella? Says I listen to metal, but given how poor YouTube is becoming for music videos with their forty ads per video and continual confirmation that you're still listening, it's getting worse. Yeah, I must admit, mind I I, I can. There's definitely been a change in YouTube and the amount of ads they're putting into videos. Like they, they're auto uh, including them into some of the videos that I've done as well. When I haven't even kind of put video uh, put ads in myself, um, uh, and I, I've definitely noticed when stuff I've been watching, there's a lot more adverts these days. I assume that they're trying to trying to maximise their ad revenue at the moment. Um, and what used to happen was you used to be able to manually insert extra adverts um in any video over 10 minutes long so if you go back a few years ago you'll 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 notice especially the kind of big youtubers you'll notice a, a lot of their videos was like 10 minutes and 10 seconds or 10 minutes 20 seconds something like that there was a point where they were specifically making 10 minute long videos so they could put more ads in, into their own content well recently youtube changed that now um, and that is now eight minutes so if you start to see a lot of videos around the eight minute mark now that'll be why um but yeah i t i tend not to insert i mean i do have ads turned on so there are ads on my videos but i don't insert any extra ones myself um like if if there's any extra ones or if you think it's excessive in any of my videos please let me know because it's 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 actually youtube putting them in themselves i can go in and take them out but i've got no control of them putting them in there in the first place and unless i go back and like regularly review them i've got no idea what youtube have actually done um, and I saw today that um, Uncle Atom had been complaining to YouTube actually, saying that basically um, they'd been putting like the the re replays of his live streams. Um, YouTube had been putting in like a, um, like two unskippable adverts almost every three minutes for like the first for the first hour or something, and then like nothing after that. And that's all based upon kind of data and stuff showing that his average watch time might be like. Let's say people are watching 20 minutes of the video. So what they do is they put they put all the adverts front loaded into the first 20 minutes of the video. And then basically, as pe as, as a lot less people watch the entire one, and I know that because my live streams are exactly the same as well. And it, like the vast majority of people watch for about 20, 25 minutes, something like that. Um, then they start to, they start to basically just like not bother putting them in because there's not enough people watching anyway. So they pile them all in at the front end. Um, Steve said, I see countless Salamander's armies painted in lurid lime green, and personally I hate it, but I'd never turn around and criticise someone else's mini. Yeah, that's it, mate. It's all about personal taste, isn't it? Phil saying, big makeup brushes, what I use on my Space Marines. Uh, very useful and saves time, plus they're cheap. That's the th that's the thing as well, mate. It's like, um, like dry brushes are, like, they don't last nearly as long as, like, a normal brush, because you're essentially, like, sort of really hammering the, hammering the bristles on it, like, as you're painting with them. So um, yeah, they, they take a little bit of flack and stuff. So get, getting cheap ones sometimes is uh, is by far the the best way to do it. Um, Super Punk Man said, "I base coat, main colors, shadow, shade, dry brush, wash, then highlight." Yeah, the, I, I if I'm just doing something super fast, and, I, and and to be honest, I should do this more often because I'm I'm always sort of happy with with the with the finish. It's almost base colors, wash, pick out a highlight, done. Like it's, uh, it's just it's so much faster, and I, and, I, and I'm, I'm I'm always pretty happy with with the the finished effect of it. Um, 
and I don't know whether it's just because I've got to a point where like maybe I do a decent job of just doing that method because I've done it so much now um, and maybe that's why but it certainly sort of speeds up the process and get a lot more done um, Tony says washers and glazes that would be considered as cheating but I know a few here who own my minis and would hope that they look better to the eye than under the camera that's the other side of it as well folks don't forget like when you take a picture of your mini your mini doesn't really look like that to the naked eye like no but nobody like looks at your minis like 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 that like really up close um and that's that's unfortunately when you're taking pictures of them and putting them on instagram and stuff like that or putting them on on the facebook for the groups and things unfortunately that's essentially what you're doing you're doing a super close-up shot you're making it like 200 percent bigger than it is and if you think like how small a miniature is in your hand now if you blow that up to take twice the size, like every little kind of brush stroke or mistake is going to be absolutely magnified. And, and that's not real life, really. Um, it's why I prefer not to do single minis when I do a photograph of anything I've been painting. I tend not to do like a single mini. I tend to do like a group shot because essentially what you have to do to get them all in, you have to stand, like you have to take a step back. You, you can't get too close with the camera. And what that forces you to do is to not concentrate on the um, on the, any individual mistakes. So yeah, there's a little trick. If you're photographing your minis, don't don't just do a, a photograph of just just one mini on its own, unless it's a big one, like of course. Um, just get them in a get them in a group shot. It always looks better. Um, unless you're a fantastically sort of uh, detailed artist. Um, yeah, don't don't worry about it. Um, Krabby saying I get makeup brushes for my local boys. I've tried a few, but the ones I use are class. Really made my blush pop. <laughs> you always look good, my friend. You must be really doing a good job with that makeup these days. Is that for your new job? Is that where you go look your best? Peter says, uh, "Okay, thanks. Two colours I don't have." Not that I'm doing name runs anyway. <laughs> um, I've got no idea why I've why I've picked that, that particular colour up, mate. That uh, that bronze. I've had it for ages and, and I never used it. I obviously picked it up for something. Um, what the hell's going on here? I obviously picked it up for something, but I can't remember what the hell it was for. Um, so, yeah. But it's warm in here tonight, folks. I'm not sure it'll be a late one tonight because I'm uh, I'm feeling a bit warm with all these lights on me. It's been really nice weather here actually today, folks. I don't know where it's, where it's been like where you are, but um, yeah, I've been keeping up my keeping up my exercise. I did another, I think I did five mile today or something like that. Um, like walking to and from nursery. But on on the like, I dropped them off this morning and on the way back I did like a longer route on the way back um, to get a few more few more steps in and get my movement up a little bit more as well. So. Yeah, I'm happy with how my with how my fitness is going at the minute. I'm losing weight still, so. Um, Andrew Fairbanks says, use Sikorax bronze on an item I had done with new Citadel base and new wash, and I saw literally nothing. Um, I saw literally nothing. Oh. Um, I don't know, it, it works all right for these ones anyway. Um, I, I tell you what you do have to do, though, you've got to seriously shake it up. It, um, it, you really need to make sure it's mixed well. Um, John saying those Necrons look awesome. I'm happy with them, mate. Um, they are, they're coming along quite nicely. But like I say, I, I, like when I finish these, I mean, you've all, you've all seen how I've been painting them. There's, I'm not doing any fancy tricks. I'm not like, I'm not super kind of doing anything, any, anything special on them. Um, but once I get like the group shot together, um, They'll look great, and I know they will, because you, you won't be focusing on one individual model. You'll look at them as a full kind of like mini army, if you like. I'll I'll put them on like a nice like on a map with terrain and stuff to kind of make the make the theme start to kind of come together. And once you start doing that kind of stuff, honestly, that's that's when they stand out. That's like you know when you do like armies on parade, those boards and stuff. I've seen some average paint jobs winning medals on the armies on parade because they've done a fantastic job of theming it and, and a really nice kind of display board and stuff. But the um but the paint jobs themselves are just like just okay really. Like I'm not having a dig at them or anything like that. They're just 
they're not outstanding really. The models on their own wouldn't really necessarily win any special awards. Um Curry's in as well. Good evening, Curry. How are you doing? I'm glad that your airbrushing there is starting to go well as well, my friend. Um, Rob is back in as well. Nice to see you, Rob. James Bray, good evening, sir. Uh, Steve says, I, I enjoyed working with my airbrush. My World War II bolt action British tank raspberry ripple style tank scheme was fun. Do you know what, mate? Painting tanks and stuff with an airbrush is such a like an enjoyable thing. Um, I'm looking forward to getting like kind of some... Um, some kind of tank or big vehicle from our um, from our Space Marines, really, just to just to break the airbrush out, really, and try and do something nice and big. Because I tend I tend to do I do all my priming and kind of like zenith or highlighting and stuff with the airbrush. I've done a lot more airbrush work on my on my Space Marines on my uh, Ultramarines, and um, with the, the the different blues and stuff to get the base armor down. But um, I've never really painted anything big that I wanted to like really. Give it, give it a real go with the airbrush. So, it'd be nice to do something like that at some point. Um, so yes, folks, this this week you will start to see, hopefully, the the, the future of what I'm trying to kind of do content wise and how much how much stuff I plan to kind of to put out. Um, because because essentially, I'm st I'm now starting to get into a routine since the little one started nursery. And it's allowing me to kind of to, to fix my day around the hours I've got and, and not have to kind of look after him and try and have an hour here and an hour there, trying to like sort of handle it with my wife where she's working and then she's got an hour between meetings so she looks after the little one while I try and get some work done. Um, it's been quite hard really, if I'm, if I'm perfectly honest. I'm sure a lot of you have been feeling exactly the same. Um, but now he's, now he's back to nursery and stuff. Um, this week's been awesome. I've managed to get loads done. I've been mega busy, but um, yeah. There'll be, there'll be five five videos in total this week. One every day. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what folks think of them. Um, do you see that? Yeah, I would dirty them up with a bit of Agrax Earthshade. Um, no, I don't want to kind of dirty them up too much, mate, I don't think. But um, I, they might look a bit different on camera, mate, but in the flesh, they, they look kind of like grubby and a bit like mottled and stuff. VGCN was trying to sneak asleep in, but the little bloke made sure that didn't happen. Yeah, I know that feeling, mate. My my little bloke does exactly the same thing as well. Um, VGC, not painting today, Andy. That was 20, 20 minutes ago. I'm reading these comments from now. So, I'll tell you what, mate. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna skip well ahead. I'll look through very briefly. If anybody's highlighted anything, I'll read them ones. James Bray's on his van saw on the painting handle. Nice one, mate. And um, what was that comment there? loads and loads of chat here VGC, oh yeah i spoke to the guy in the blitz ball group they were doing the group uk shipment and he said they had to pull the pin when they put in the two copies per person limit yeah i thought so mate um cobra kai never dies in vj there kelly Cordell, i low there he says holy it's hard to put minis together with a broken arm oh my god mate i bet it is difficult um james has seen he's been doing youtube premium for a good year now and it's expensive yeah that gets rid of your ads mate doesn't it um but you see, I still have to pay the 15 Australian dollars a month for YouTube premium, but it's worth it. Um, James said, I remember the YouTube when 10 minutes was the limit, back when before Google purchased the company. Yeah, there was a limit on how big a video you could make, actually, wasn't there? Um, Steve says, yeah, YouTube's trying to push their new pay-per-view scheme. I don't think it's pay-per-view, me, is it? But it's like a subscription to be ad-free, I think. Um, but by the same stretch... They make a lot of money from adverts, so I don't think they're trying to push everybody. I just think um, at the minute there is um, there's just a lot of adverts on YouTube, and they're they're really kind of pushing them. I mean, I don't see that's causing any particular issues with my with my channel. I'm not seeing any kind of downturn in views or anything like that so much because of it, or I'm not seeing people cl clicking off the videos any earlier than they would do anyway. Um, but what I'm also not seeing really is any kind of increase in ad revenue. So I, I'm assuming that my videos are not really being affected, or if, or if they are, everybody's just skipping over them anyway. So, but I'm not seeing any increase in ad revenue. Let, let's put it that way. Not at the minute. So, um, the thing is, when you're a channel my size, ad revenue doesn't really go very far. You, you don't really notice the ad revenue. If I'm perfectly honest. Um, but if you're like somebody that's getting like millions of views a video, 
um, you will you will very quickly see a difference if they start messing about with with ads and stuff like that. Um, you'll either make a lot of money off the back of people watching more of the ads, or you'll make a lot less money off the back of people um, sort of not watching your videos and skipping over stuff. Um, right, what time are we at now? I'm st I'll, I'll get near it to the start of the chat. Jesse Hamill, nice to see you in. It's in smoky and hot. California is basically on fire. Hope everyone's okay, mate. Mark was saying, all good, the weather here today. Yesterday, earthquake was a nuisance. Yeah, I remember seeing about, seeing about that in the news, mate. Um, Regis saying it rained all day. Palms saying just pure, pure cheat painting. That's fine, mate. Uh, JVC Paints, nice to see you. So I'm, I'm up to two hours of PT a day, too. Bike and gym, two hours of painting a day, too. Goals and more goals. Nice one. Tim Kelly's in. Nice to see you, mate. Have you had any news back from you? Your results yet? Um... Marco says, I really like the clip from the Monday live stream. I hope to see more of those. That's the plan, mate. I mean, every now and again, the Monday night streams will be a bit more of a kind of like a, a bit more of a ramble type things, you know, a bit more community hangout stuff. It might be something like, um, you know, when we did the um, the fighting fantasy book, like that, that kind of stuff doesn't really lend itself to that kind of a, a clip, really. Um, but anything that's a, a sort of a, a proper topic and the way I've been doing them obviously by um, sort of trying to do a, a piece to camera and get my points across and stuff that then lets the, the chat discuss like my, my thoughts and my opinions um, but also allows me to kind of to, to take that out, edit it down um, and put it up as a, as a separate video for those that don't uh, that don't really want to watch a full live stream, and and they, they don't get lots of views to be fair. But like, it's just it's a, it's another way to kind of to introduce people. If if they like the kind of topic, if they if they like what I do, maybe they might come across and watch a live stream. Um, like I'd certainly get more comments on on those videos than I'd ever do on the live stream because the vast majority of people who watch live streams put them on as a, almost like a podcast in the background, or they're actually in the live stream live watching them. So they're not really kind of commenting on the video after the event. So yeah, it's a way to get some extra comments and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm just I'm just trying different things at the moment. Ed. I had a real kind of like sit down on Saturday and, and went through some of the plans um, for the future and things, and and really trying to like work out the stuff that there's things I want to do, but but I know it's that kind of difficult, like getting getting people to come and film stuff. I can't rely upon that. It's not like I've got like a family member who like. Like none of my sons or anything are interested in in kind of doing it. Um, it's not like I've got like a best mate who just at the drop of a hat can just come and film stuff. It's not like I do the channel with anybody else. So if like filming kind of gameplay type stuff is, whilst it's something I want to do in the future, it's not something I can kind of commit to regularly. Basically because I don't have a regular opponent to come and to come and film with. And then you you combine sort of the current situation with sort of not not being able to have groups of more than however so many people six i think it is now um so like like not not going to other people's houses and all that kind of stuff like if, if i'm being like sort of real with myself it's going to be a while before i can get to that kind of stuff so i'm really focusing now on the things that i can do on my own and the things in the past that i've done on my own that i enjoy doing so yeah i just i feel a bit of a Feel a bit of a boost at the minute, and I'm and I'm raring to go, and I'm and I've been powering through stuff this week. So, yeah, a video every week, this a video every day this week. Um, what's this one? The great great close up of the nose now. Oh, I tell you what, I, I've got to get quite. I've got to get a hell of a long way in there to kind of to to, to get on the screen there, like, but. Uh, yeah, that's why I've moved it, really. Uh, my nose has been on camera plenty of times, mate. I'm not bothered about making an arse of myself. So, all right, that's all the black's done. That's that bit. Oops. Um, Tim's saying, no results yet. Family's isolating, 100% sure we're COVID-free. School just being co cautious. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain, though, mate, isn't it? When, especially when you've just got your new job, the kids have just gone back and stuff. I think... Um, it's a, it's just a bit of a shame, buddy. Um, scroll down a bit. Um, Tony's saying, I'd love to see the next fight in fantasy to coincide with the Atlantis release of their minis. That'd be fun, especially if Dan could get the legend involved. <laughs> 
who knows mate who knows one day maybe um VG saying looking forward to to guesting on a blackjack legacy bat rep when i get to the uk next year i tell you what mate the way things are at the minute i can't see anybody traveling anywhere I, i'm i'm starting to think that even getting to a deputy con next year is going to be uh, off the menu again um Tom's saying, I read the plot summary on Wikipedia for Tim Kelly. Um, what were you talking about? I need to go back and see what you were talking about. Oh. They're boys in their lost. That's all I need to know. Sounds boring. What? I hope you're not talking about lost boys. Oh, lost boys. You, oh, you, you need to get that, mate. You need to get that sorted. Classic 80s, mate. What are you playing at? Not watching that. Call yourself cultured. Um... Tim saying, yeah, it's crazy the Telford Test Centre ran out of kits 20 minutes after we attended. Oh, my God, mate. Um, right, we're going to go with the red now and start to pick out some of the uh, some of the weapons uh, and pipes and stuff. Let's make sure we got it on camera. So... With this, uh, VG says, "Are you free to play a blitzball this weekend on Tabletop Simulator?" I tell you what, mate. Drop, drop me a message, and we'll try and sort something out. Because we, weekends, I'm trying to kind of like get a bit of family time and stuff. But we, depending upon time differences and time zones and stuff, and we might be able to try and work something out, mate. So um, drop me a message, and we'll see what we can sort. Because I wouldn't mind giving that a shot. To be fair. Um, All right, come in and just do the do the chest piece there as well. Just very lightly, just using the side of the brush to try and pick out the symbol on the chest piece. Um, and then I need to water this down quite a bit. Try and uh, try and come in and flow into. One of these weapon parts here. Needs to be a little bit more runny, I think. I come across the top and then round onto the back side of it as well. Bit more paint on that, I think. Uh, VG saying I can do some weekdays too, mate, if you prefer, even if I have to get up a bit early. Yeah, I'll tell you what, mate, let's let's have a chat on there uh, on Discord, mate, and try and set a date up because um I know we talked about doing it before and I, I never managed to kind of sort something out, mate. And I apologize for that. Because I, I do I do want to give it a go. So we'll sort something, buddy. VG saying, does anyone know if Dreadball is on Tabletop Simulator? If anyone would be free to teach me. It's not on Tabletop Simulator, mate, but it is on um, Vassal. So Kieran, um, Kieran Morris has been doing some stuff during lockdown and stuff for um, for Vassal. That's what, they, that's what Mantic have been using for that one because I think he basically uh, did all of the work for it. Um, but, yeah, I don't think it's on... I don't think it's on tabletop simulator unless somebody else has done a um done a module for it. Um however it's not difficult, mate. It's pretty straightforward. You know what the problem with Dreadball is, mate, I will say. Dreadball is a fantastic game. I really, really like it. But but the the minis don't inspire me. They don't make me want to play it. They're they're a bit of a small scale. Um, and they just they don't like my fuse kind of thing, if you know what I mean. Like, I can't bring myself to to, to actually like find one particular um, sort of team that really stands out enough that I want to play it. So, and unfortunately, I'm kind of I'm very much an aesthetic gamer. Like the the look of the the look of the minis means a lot to me because there's too many there's too many good games out there to. Uh, to play the ones that you you're not enjoying painting, you're not enjoying 
kind of like uh, playing with, if you like. So that's that's the problem for me with Dreadball. However, the game itself, the gameplay, it's it's as it's as good as it gets, really. It's really well written. Rules are really clear. Um, and, and it's a lot of fun. So, um, Jim said, I want to do my Van Saw in a bold scheme, but keep getting scared of being too over the top. Don't worry about being over the top, mate. Always just go for it. What's the worst that happens? You absolutely hate it, and you either strip them and, and go again, or, or, you're, or you're 30 quid down and you go and buy another set. Like, what, what's really, what's the worst that can happen? Just give it a go. Like, you might kind of find something, like, you absolutely love. Um, Super Pumpkin Man saying, making glowing effects has always been very difficult for me or just time consuming. Yeah, it, it, it can be, mate, to be fair. That, that's, where, that's where kind of, I mean, what I'm doing with these is I'm coming in with, like, the red. I'm going to lighten them up. So, basically, I've got these two, whoops, I've got these two oranges as well, like a mid colour and a brighter one. And I'll kind of I'll highlight it up to that, um, till eventually essentially it looks, it, it looks like that. And I'm not, there's too many lights from different angles here, but it's not really meant to be kind of glowing. It's just it's just meant to be bright, really. So, um, I'm happy with how it's looking. Uh, VGC and all good mate, you're spinning a lot of plates. Everybody's spinning plates, mate. We've we've all got work to do and stuff like that. So, I'm not like uh, I'm not crying um, anything like that, but. Um, yeah, we we will definitely sort something, though, mate. I promise, because I, I um I would like to play with you, play a game with you, mate. Um, and I appreciate all the every, everything you've done for me as well. It's it's only fair to kind of uh to um to give you that game I promised. So yeah, we'll do it, mate. Um, let me just get into the chess part. Um, James in Dreadball does appear to be on tabletop simulator from the Steam Workshop. Oh, I wonder how somebody must somebody must have uh, put one on one, but it seems weird that it's on there when they, when when um, Kieran and the Manti guys went to so much trouble like, in the summer to uh, to convert like a vassal version of it, and they had a because they had like a vassal Dread Bowl League thing I think over the over the summer. Um, VG saying, uh, yeah, I hear you on the Dread Bowl minis. That's one of the reasons I'm hesitant to buy the core box. Neither of the factions minis interest me. Yeah, and, and sadly, mate, that both of those factions in the core box are, are not the nicest sculpts either. Um, they're they're single piece plastics. They're not fantastic, unfortunately. Um, some of some of the other teams, um, are much nicer quality, but um, yeah, if, just just for me personally, mate, they're, they're not really my. They're not really my kind of thing, really. I mean, I love the Blood Bowl minis. But but the game just doesn't interest me, which is why kind of um, Blitzball does interest me. Unfortunately, it's just not the easiest thing to pick up at the minute. Um, one because it's kind of uh, it's only available in certain regions, and and also because it's it's completely sold out at the moment as well. I've even tried looking online to see if anybody's trying to like sell one and make a bit of a profit off it kind of thing, but you can't even seem to um to pick them up, um like on eBay or anything like that. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate because I would like to give it a try. Um, James Brayson, stop being the voice of reason, Andy. I've had wine. <laughs> just do it, man. Don't be daft. Just go and do it. It's not about being the voice of reason, mate. It's just like why, like what's absolutely what? What is the worst that can happen? Just, just do it. Just see what you can do. If it looks, if it looks garbage. Like it looks garbage, just just strip them and start again. But you'll never know if you don't do it. You'll always wonder what they would have looked like if you'd if you'd just been a little bit more risky with them. Um Palms you see, I'm just about to finish painting my dread ball box and I haven't particularly enjoyed the process. It made me remember how good GW minis are. Yeah, sadly. I mean, I, I mean, let's not forget, Dread, Dread Ball is is not a new game, and those sculpts were were not made at a time when um, Mantic were making their best sculpts. I mean, the stuff they're doing now is on a different level to where they were 
I'm looking forward to seeing um, the actual physical models for this um, ship game thing um, because any of the stuff they've been doing recently has been top notch so yeah I'm, I'm not worried in the slightest about the quality of their new stuff but I have to admit like some of the, some of their older stuff it's uh, it ain't the best and unfortunately some of the Dreadball minis is uh, is among that um, But, but like you, this is what I was saying a, a little while ago about kind of like su supporting games and stuff. Like there is no way that they'll ever kind of re-sculpt like the older Dreadball minis and stuff like that. Like that game's pretty much getting as much as it's ever going to get. And it, and it and technically it doesn't really need any more. That's the thing. It's just that if you're a if you're a player, if you love that game, like it's just a shame there's nothing there's nothing new for it. I'm making a right cotton ball to mess of that one. Aren't I? I just need to try and get them uh, get that paint to flow. Um, yeah, what is it with those poses? Uh, VG saying, I figure if I play it on tabletop soon a bit and really like the game, I will feel okay to commit buying the box and a couple of teams that I actually like. Uh, for example, the Vman. Um, I mean, the thing is, VG, you, you can pick it up relatively cheaply. I think, mate. So you're not exactly. Um, I think there's plenty of places have discount on it. I don't know about getting it to to uh, to Australia, like, but there's plenty of places sell it relatively cheap. So I don't think you'll have too much trouble picking one up uh, on the cheap side. But yeah, it's unfortunately it's um, yeah, just just those minis push me off, mate. That's all. Um, Iron says a number of good games I play lack the eye catching mini factor, so I feel you with Dreadball. Beyond the Gates of Antares needs some wild or flashy minis to help it grow. Yeah, that that's a game that you just you just don't even hear about. Like even Warlord don't really talk about that game. It's a little bit like Mantic with uh, with Warpath really. They've kind of just um just just give up talking about it. I think it's it's obviously not not their main focus. They're obviously not that happy with it themselves either. Um but um yeah it doesn't doesn't get a lot of doesn't get a lot of love. Unfortunately for the folks that do enjoy the game. Um Pomsey's saying that don't get me wrong, I, I love Mantic, but they were they were small and lacked precision in terms of the sculpts, just makes you realise how good you are. Yeah, I agree, mate. I mean the um the original Dreadball minis were quite small as well. I mean, the size of the hexes are quite small, so the min the minis are kind of basically just they're they're um they're they're designed to be the right size for the for the for the game really. Unfortunately, it's just uh they just they just lack a little bit of um. I mean, it might be the material they're made of. Um, it's a shame they weren't made in resin or something really. Mantix resins is great. I would love to see some new teams redone in resin, um, but yeah, like I say, that's not uh, that's not going to happen anytime soon. And I'm sure you could kind of convert stuff up in that, but that's just too much like too much like hard work. If I'm honest, <laughs> you know what I'm like when it comes to converting minis and things. Um, so, Palms, just, maybe Dreadball version three will have better minis. I don't think there'll ever be a version three, mate. Because technically, it it doesn't need a version three, uh, because the the game itself is is great. There's there's no problems with the game, and um, the rules don't need an overhaul. Um, uh, I and and I and I think the problem is that they won't, they won't just release a third edition just to get some new minis. I think the get the the game's the game, mate. I just don't think there's going to be one. But Palms is just saying that I've heard it's a good game. It's a great game, mate. Honestly, I I love playing the game. But to, like for me personally, I'd enjoy playing that game just as much with with tokens or counters. VG saying cheapest I could find it over here was about ninety dollars. I'm not sure what the exchange rates are, mate. To be honest, but it, it it tends to be relatively cheap over here. Um, I'll keep an eye out for you, mate, and see what there is. But obviously, I think I bring, I think they are bringing out something soon, an annual or something like that. I don't think it's dead as far as my concern. No, I'm not saying that the game's dead, mate. It's just that there's there's nothing more to buy for it. Like they they're not producing any more teams. Um, the the stuff that they're talking about bringing out is like um, 
like new new ways to play or like kind of like almost like campaign type they were talking about um like classic games or something like that so if you imagine like if if in the law in the background there was a team from like um from kind of well it's all historic it's all in the set in the future so let's say there's a, a team that won the year 3000 intergalactic cup that was full of all these superstars and stuff um that's the, like they're trying to get these kind of like um these like super match up games of like oh these are the these are the the the, the best teams of their of their generation what would happen if i guess it's a little bit like them, them wrestling games where you say what would happen if hulk hogan could fight the rock and like all that kind of stuff or the boxing games on video games where you say what would happen if muhammad ali could fight mike tyson i think that's what they're trying to get at with it they're trying to have this kind of um like different kind of um sort of almost like a campaign or like a match type thing but uh it's a nice idea uh, and anything that gets people playing the game again can't can't be a bad thing but i'm pretty certain there's there's no real plans on releasing uh, any new teams i think there's already quite a few teams in there to be fair um Honestly, it's missed most of tonight's chat. Sorry, any news, any new info on Warcry out yet? No, there's nothing at all new, mate. The only thing I would say, if, if you're not aware of it, is there there was a leak of, um, there's a book that basically is coming out. You know, when they released um, Warcry and Beastgrave and stuff, there's normally like a novel that comes out with the, with the game. Um, there was a, a release date for the for the book for Catacombs was for October. So I think we're expecting to see the new Warcry in October, mate. But other than that, there's been uh, there's been no more news, bud. Um, but yeah, still looking forward to it. Still an instant buy for me. I tell you what, I must turn off my notifications on my watch. I get notifications every time somebody posts in the bloody uh, in our Discord group, and it's constantly buzzing on my arm at the moment. It's getting really lively in there, by the way, folks. I love the fact people are really embracing it. Um, and I will always keep thanking VJ for making me uh, start that up. But um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with how the face, how the the Discord community with Patreons is really kind of taking off now. It's like, like I've always loved the community aspect of like doing like this YouTube stuff. Really, is it's just a way to bring community together. Like it's almost like a like I'm not like it's it's weird to say it but i don't i don't consider myself like a youtuber type thing if you like it's i i see this as a way for everybody to come together and kind of and to to share the hobby and kind of do things together um but it's and a lot of it was focused around kind of bringing people into the facebook group and things but but now it's nice that actually the the patreon's grown to such a a good level that actually the the, the patreon discord now um has become its own kind of community really and it's it's an awesome bunch of folks in there. I mean, obviously, I'm biased. Those folks are all um, supporting me and helping me to kind of run a business. But um, I, I can't have a bad word said about any of it. Really, they're just they're just a great bunch of folks in there, and it's in sort of and consequently, there's an awesome community in there now. Um, VG saying if someone is doing it cheap in the UK, maybe someone could pick me up a copy and we can send the cheapest postage. Yeah, let let me have a look into it, mate. I'll I'll have a check tomorrow. Because um, I'm sure I'm sure it, it it's not a game like it's not a game that kind of like it's uh, that obviously sells frequently if you like I think it's it's quite often quite heavily discounted so let's have a look into it see if we can get see if we can get you one cent out mate um, and see what we can do because like I say it's an awesome game if if you can look past the minis that's in the box shall I say. I won't speak for all of the different teams because um, some of them are obviously sculpted a lot later. But um, yeah, some of the uh, the early stuff, unfortunately, it's not uh, not my cup of tea, really. Um, Tony saying, uh, no paint tonight. Youngest turned up later and just got into bed. Someone wind down before bed. That's it, mate. Pop your feet up. Have a nice chill. I need to send you a message as well, Tony, actually. After our conversation, I think it was last week, mate. Um, I thought we were going to have a little break, and so I won't go into it here stuff. But uh, I'm uh, I'm hugely thankful for your support, mate. Shall I say you you know what I mean? Um, 
get that to put it there. Um, I am saying Warpath needs some major love. I rarely get my forefathers out for the game I built them for. Yeah, I, I think basically, I, I think I think I'm right in saying, and I'm sure I've heard this from Mantic, and like it's not like a rumor type thing, that, that they were never hugely happy with with Warpath. It was never exactly like it never really replicated kind of it was like they, th they thought they could basically make Kings of War sci-fi and it never really translated across to the tabletop the same way um, and, I, and I, I'm sure they said that basically it's I'm sure I've heard this from from Ronnie on, a, on a, like an open day or something where he was saying essentially like it, it needs it, like it needs a bit of a rethink and they need to look at it but essentially what they're doing is that they're up against 40k with that um, and that's quite a hard mountain to climb really unless you've got a really good game with some beautiful minis and I'm not suggesting the minis are not beautiful um, or that the game's any good but they're already kind of fighting against it like one of the things like in Mantic's favour has always been the fact that Fantasy got killed off from uh, from Games Workshop uh, and that rank and flank they, they, they definitely got a bit of a a bit of a boost from that. I mean, they make some fantastic games. I love Mantic stuff because the rules are always generally kind of very simple and very easy to get into. And 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 that you lot know that I like to, like I like to just play the game. I, I don't like to have to like kind of like math hammer out lists and all that kind of stuff. That's not the kind of stuff I enjoy doing. So, um, marvelous Minister says, which dynasty are these? I have no idea, mate. I'm just painting them a color. Um, I've not really thought kind of from a gameplay perspective or anything like that. I'll make something up as I go. Um, I ain't seen Forge Fathers see more play with Star Breach. I'm not surprised, mate. Yeah. Spider Lord says, don't they normally kickstart Dread Ball? They kickstarted both Dread Ball games, mate. Um, the version one and version two. Um, however, like like I say, I I just I I can't see them going back to Kickstarter again with their. Uh, with a, a version three of Dreadball, I'd be very, very surprised if they did, um, because I honestly think it doesn't need it. It, it it's, a, it's essentially a game that is is great. It, it, it's really, it's a really good, fun game to play. So it it doesn't need anything like from a rules perspective. So if if they went to Kickstarter to just to re-sculpt the teams, I I honestly just don't think it would um it would fly. I don't think they'd get enough. Um, I don't think they'd get enough sort of um support for it. Really, I don't think. Um, I mean, you, potentially you, you could say there's a bit of a gap for a fantasy version with Guild Ball kind of going the way of the dodo. Um, maybe that might be an option, but uh, I suppose Blood Ball still kind of ticks that box quite heavily, doesn't it? All right. How are we doing for time? Half past ten. Um, Tony saying Kristen at Manic is a is is a goddess when it comes to Manic resin casting. She does a fantastic, a, fan, a fabulous job. She does, mate. She does some awesome work. Um, Super Punk Man says the only thing I like from Manic is a Hellboy game and their terrain, which I think is really good. I'm a big fan. I, I think The Walking Dead's fantastic. I think Hayes Negan's a great game. I like Dungeon Saga. Um, Kings of War is a great game. Um, what else? Um, Dead Zone, I think, is a great game. I, I just, I generally like the games they make. I just think that some of the stuff, like some of their older models, kind of keep touring them with a, with a bad brush, unfortunately, because they're just, they're just not up to the standard of a lot of other people these days. Vigi says, does Dreadball have star players? I think it has like um like captains and stuff, mate, as well, yeah. Um Andrew Fairbanks says it was because Steve Austin wouldn't work with Hulk due to Hulk's ego. Uh, and that's the bottom line. Oh, what was that on again? Oh, I can remember that now. That was in cocktail, wasn't it? I remember that now. The, the guy that was the, the poet, and that's the bottom line. VJ says, the new Warhammer Community podcast was with Peachy, and he talked a lot about Catacombs-based Warcry campaign he was building. I haven't listened to that, mate. I must check that out. VJ says, light on details, but was interesting to hear someone talking uh, talking it down more in RPG path. Interesting, mate. Um, uh, 
Um, VG is saying, I'll take, I'll take Discord over Facebook any day myself. Too many trolls on Facebook. At least Discord has a little bit of a cost of entry. I, I wouldn't disagree with me. I think as groups get bigger and bigger, you attract a wider audience and there's always an opportunity that you're going to get somebody in that's kind of like sort of it just in there for the bedevilment of kind of causing a bit of aggro and stuff, at, at, at least with the Discord and that. You're right, there is a kind of like a price of entry if you like. Um, but the problem with Facebook, that's not really the problem with it for me. The problem with Facebook is it, it is really difficult to handle like um, like events and things. Like if you want to say like I'm, I'm doing an eight-week like painting challenge and set up an event for it you can't set an event up that lasts eight weeks um you have to keep setting them up like month to month and stuff i think it's just really complicated or, or you set it up as an end date and hope everybody comes across and kind of post in it but then you always get that like the people just post in the main group they don't read the the kind of the attached like um descriptions and stuff i just find in discord it's just because it's more condensed it's just easier to manage um, Andrew Fairbanks, yeah, fantasy dying helped Kings of War, but the fantasy crowd made the ninth age instead of crossing over and pretty much made two communities when there should have been one. I think it depends where you were, mate. I think in the UK, it was definitely very much players went to Kings of War. In the US, uh, where the bigger market was, there was, it depended upon the different regions, it kind of split a little bit. Some regions, let me go back here, some regions went Kings of War and some regions went the ninth age. Um, and to be fair, before that there was there was two kind of communities anyway, so it wasn't it wasn't that bad. Mark Flanagan's has been a big resurgence in the old Hammer Middle Hammer community online. I can imagine they're probably um, they're waiting to see what what's happening. I was chatting with somebody in the comments of my video from um, from Monday, and he was saying that Games Workshop at the minute for their specialist games division, um, they're they're currently advertising for a job for somebody kind of. Um, 3D printing models, basically um, getting them ready for kind of resin scu uh, resin sculpting and stuff, um, uh, like for resin casting and stuff like that. Um, they've they've been they've been employing I think it's about five maybe four or five different jobs into the specialist games team, and I'm assuming that basically that that's for kind of like the old world game. So it's definitely going to be the way they described it when they said it was going to be um, like Horus Heresy is the 40k it's like a specialist division game it sounds like this is going to be the same as well so it's going to be interesting to see what they do um maybe there'll be some crossover from some uh, aos models um and then some like sort of additional stuff coming through in the uh in um forge world um Mark saying lots of community activity forums have been active over the last six months. Yeah, definitely, mate. Uh, Vigis says they were talking about combining narrative war cry with catacombs, gives an almost hero quest vibe. Oh, I'll, I'll have to check that, mate. Um, Vigis saying Blitzball ticks that box even better. I'm not sure what box we were talking about there, mate. Um, Mark says as lockdown has reactivated a lot of old interest from folk that left the hobby and have come back recently, lots of pit with newly found extra time at home. Yeah, been getting it with a lot of old 90s models from Warhammer Fantasy and 5th. Yeah, I can imagine that's maybe the case, mate. Um, Super Punk Man says, the only other game I tried was Dead Zone, but I just couldn't get into it. It's a really good game, actually, mate. Again, it's it's the models for me. The, the, there's not enough models that I really like the look of. Um, again, some of them are very old. Um, some of them are not the nicest of models. There are some fantastic ones, like the new Spectre that we were just seeing coming out this this week. Um, it's just such a such a mixed bag, unfortunately. Um, Fiji says, I'm not into the Walking Dead or Hellboy IPs myself, but if rule sets are good, I'm always happy to reskin games to an IP I like. Um, Mox says, Facebook is, is like the windows of social media. We all hate it, but all accept using it almost every day. It's probably like public transport, isn't it? it it's, like, it's like it's a necessary evil sometimes. If you want to know what's going on, if you want to catch up with friends, um, it, 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 unfortunately, it, it almost becomes a bit of a necessary evil. Um, Andrew saying that's a big glass of vodka there. Yeah, just just the water, mate. Just the water. VG said, anyone else here interested in Monpok on Tabletop Simulator? I learn better when someone teaches me. So trying to tee something up. I, I don't know a lot about the game, if I'm perfectly honest, mate. I had a little look about, like to see what the to try and see what you could buy for the game after we talked about it in, in the Discord group. But I must admit, I'm I'm kind of none the wiser about it, if I'm honest. Mark says, that's an interesting nugget of info on a new hiring a GW. 
watching with interest for sure. Yeah, if you have a look, in, if you have a look on their on their website at the minute, they're um, they're hiring, like I say, somebody for that team, and it's about like you've got to be like be th- printing three D models, get getting them ready. Um, I'm assuming there must be some kind of like play testing, whether it's whether they're using the 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 three D prints to kind of to see what the sculpts look like and stuff. But certainly that's um that's what they're that's what they're doing at the minute. But but there's a big chunk of people recently all for that same team. Um Super Punk Man says, All I want is my Tomb Kings back. Yeah, I kinda see them coming back, mate. I think the closest you'll probably get is the is the Bone Reapers, mate, with a few adjustments. Um and Brits, yeah. I don't we might see Bretonians come back. There's a lot of love for them. Um Nostox saying Dead Zone is excellent. Yeah, I, I like the game, I just Unfortunately, the the, um, the the minis don't don't sort of um, spark life in me. Honestly, it's weird. I seem to be miss big parts of the chat. Got it on live chat, but don't get all chats. It was doing this the other day as well, mate. I don't know if it's just playing up with the minute. Uh, VG said I'll send you some links, good bat reps, etc. Yeah, I really like dead zone rule mechanics, uh, especially exploding eights. Exploding eights are great. Um, they they're, they're one of the one of the better. Um, um, Sort of things I like, like explode. I, I like, I'm not as keen on exploding sixes. I think they happen too often. Exploding eights is awesome. Um, you get exploding sixes in. Um, oh, you don't get exploding sixes. Sorry, in. Um, in Dread Ball, you get like a doubling mechanic. If you need one success to do something, if you double, if you get two successes, you get to do like a free action and stuff. Um, Dirksen, they currently have Dead Zone 2.0 PDF for free at Mantic. Uh, yeah, they do, mate. Yeah, the, um, the 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 PDFs for all of their rule for all of their games are free, mate. To be fair, how we're we doing for time? Right, I'll get a little bit more paint and done. I think we'll get this orange put on. I'm trying to have not too late at night because I'm I'm getting up early every morning now. What used to happen was I used to have a lie in on a morning, and my wife would take the little one off to nursery at the old place because we used to have to drive there. Now because we're walking there, that this is this is where I'm starting to get my get my exercise in. So I am I'm getting up early to kind of to help get him sorted and and then walk to nursery with him to get him up and out the door and me get my steps in and stuff. So uh, there we go. So yeah, I'm trying not to go to bed too late anymore now because I got in a bit of a routine of like staying up until like one half one and stuff, and I've never really been that like a, like a late a late like. Late the bed. I'd always been a bit of an early bird for when I went when I cut to bedtime, but uh, yeah, it's it's helping. I'm getting, I'm going to bed a little bit earlier at the minute, and I'm getting getting better sleep and feeling healthier for it and stuff. So yeah, all good. I'm feeling like I'm uh, I've turned over a new leaf. Both me and my wife's both on the uh, on the on the health kick at the minute. Doesn't help when my little ones having their uh, fish fingers and for his tea and I and I could I could quite happily have uh, <laughs> could have quite happily have wolfed some fish fingers down. I do love a fish finger. Can't beat a fish finger sandwich. Um, um Ian says a call to arms had exploding fours for beam weapons. Made things pretty crazy sometimes, but it was a high randomness game anyways. Yeah, exploding fours, bloody hell. Um, I mean, that's happening 25% of the time you roll a dice. It's uh... Actually, what's, what's the game I was just thinking about where... There's a game I've read the rules for recently where you get different, different dice for different models. Um, oh, it's Bros and Badgers. That's the one. You get different dice, and basically, when it's um, um, you can like do a critical roll, but uh, it's nice orange paint all over my top there. Um, you can you when you get a critical roll kind of thing, like something special happens if you like, oh yeah, you add seven, I think, to the result. Um, and that's how like you kind of like your weaker characters can sometimes um like pull off amazing feats because. For all four might be the maximum number they can roll. Um, they're going to roll that that four more times because it's statistically more likely to happen. Um, 
Mark Flanagan saying, what time is early? My alarm is 5.45 a.m. It kills me. Yeah, my little, my little one's normally up about 6 in the morning, mate. So, yeah, I'm not far behind you, to be fair. Um, he gets up early. Um, right, just getting in these, uh, dotting the eyeballs there a little bit. I kind of basically what I'm doing is I put a bit of kind of like runny paint into the eyeball, uh, into the eye sockets, and then essentially because it's quite thin, it, it dries into like, into the recesses, and it almost just looks like a bit more like it's glowing really. So that's uh, that's what I try and do with those. Um, Gus Yoakum saying stop using Facebook might be the best thing I ever done. Although this community and the Burrows and Badgers community seems a great at Facebook, but I think I'll settle with Discord. Yeah, I mean to be honest, mate, um, I use Facebook uh, like because to be honest, like a lot of what I use Facebook for, I don't I don't use it for personal stuff. Like if anybody's friends with me on Facebook, you'll see I never ever post on like my personal like my own personal timeline. I never post anything on it. I use it purely just to kind of keep in touch with all the different miniatures games groups. Um, I don't really look at like I don't follow anything else. I don't like, um, like I don't follow any kind of um, anything outside of the miniatures games hobby. Really, I use it purely um, just for gaming and stuff. Um, see what companies are bringing out. Keep up to date with like the latest news and the latest kind of uh, rumors and stuff of what's going on. It's purely kind of like a research tool for me. So I don't find it too bad. What I don't like about it is it's just not... It, well, if you're somebody who runs a group, like I do with the, with the Blackjack group, um, it's just not very user-friendly, unfortunately. It's not It's not the best way to kind of... to. Um, it's like, like conversations get lost. I, I don't get to see everything that goes on there. So even though I'm the, the, I'm the only moderator in the group... I'm the only person that does anything with um, sort of with uh, with posts and stuff. So if anything gets deleted because it breaks the group's rules, it's because I've I've deleted it basically. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't always get to. Oh, just need to wipe this off. Unfortunately, I don't always get to see everything that's going on, and and when you're the moderator, that's a bit of a problem. So yeah, if you ever see anything, anybody breaking any kind of. Uh, of the of the group's rules and stuff, or, or you want to report a post, f feel free because the, the, I'm sure there's loads go on that I miss because because Facebook just doesn't show me them, which is a real problem. There can be stuff going in, into there like spam and stuff that I just don't know about, and I get loads of like spam accounts trying to join the Facebook group, um, on a daily basis. That's why I've got um I I have to I have to accept everybody into the group manually. Because otherwise, um, it would be just full of uh, just full of spam accounts, just trying to trying to sell fake fake ray bands or whatever the hell they do these days. Dodgy AirPods, probably. And you see it in you see it in other groups where basically they, they don't have like a vetting process. They just basically um, as soon as you apply to be in the group, your application gets accepted, and you end up with um, spam links and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Okay. Um, Arnold saying, night peeps, all this talk about bed and sleep. Yes, mate, I know you're an hour ahead of us anyway, so thanks for popping in, buddy. Thank you, as always. Vegas says, if you're not feeling the dead zone minis, you can always proxy or kid bash some Citadel hotness. It's I'm really funny about doing that kind of stuff, mate. I, I just... It's I like I like I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I I just don't do it. I like it's one of the reasons I don't really play any kind of like any rule sets that don't have miniatures attached to them. I, like I can't really put my finger on what it is. I just I like the idea of, of supporting the game of like like if I like the rules, I, I like to support the kind of the the creators if you like. But unfortunately, if that, if that game doesn't have anything I can like support them with. Or if it doesn't have um, if it, if it, if it's stuff that I don't like the look of, then unfortunately I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be, be able to support them really. And I'm just I like things to just be simple really. Like it, um, I'm just not I'm just not a big like player of like I'm not one of these people that house rules a lot of stuff. I don't try and kind of create my own games. I I don't reskin games. 
like um, take a rule set for one game and play with another set of minis or anything. I just like to like to actually play like a game where if I play against somebody else, they'll know exactly what we're playing. It won't be a case of like, well, oh well, this mini here is meant to be this one, um, and this one here that I'm using here is I'm I'm just using that one, and I just want it to be just simple and straightforward. Mox's neck runs are looking cracking, gritty and dirty in a good way, as opposed to the clean, clinical, usual approach. I like them. Yeah, it's kind of it, it's part of the part of the aesthetic of getting them done quick, mate. Um, Tony saying regarding Facebook and and to like the occasional geek out <laughs> about the about the about the Bond film. Yes, mate. Peter saying bloody hell, Andy, I'll never sell those fake red pants at this rate. <laughs> Yogam says nice color scheme on the Necrons. Thank you, mate. I haven't really looked at them before because I've been concentrating on my own models. Yeah, it's just I, I like I said before. I think me, I might have said it last week. I tried a few different kind of test schemes, really, just to to, to settle on one that I like. I like the look of, and. Um, this kind of um, dirty kind of brassy colour, um, along with a like kind of an orangey uh, glow to the weapons and stuff, uh, was was the the one that I settled on, mate. And there was a few reasons. I really liked the I, I liked it with a the blue. They look quite cool as well. But I, um, but because my Space Marines are blue, because I, I I paint um, Ultra Marines, it was just. Um, it was nice to do something a different colour. That was all, just so it would contrast a little bit on the tabletop. Because the chances are, when I when I do really play this, um, I'll probably just be playing late against the mate, and, and he hasn't got any forty k stuff at the minute. I think he's got some Imperial Guard stuff, but I don't know how much he's got painted up yet. Wow, did I really kind of? That's when I'm uh, leaning too far forward, isn't it? I just watched that on the corner of my screen there. Um, so so yeah, the, the likelihood is we'll be we'll be just using my my minis and stuff. So um, that's why I've kind of concentrated on on um, just trying to make them kind of stand out against each other. And again, I'm I'm just looking forward to getting them finished, get them on the table, get a nice group shot. Like, I I get a lot of enjoyment from just setting them all up and taking a picture. To be fair, like there's a lot to be said about that. Um, Peter, Peter says I've been paying too much attention now my marine look like Andy's Necrons <laughs> JVC says okay guys I'm off to work take care catch you in the next one thank you very much JVC mate nice to see you in the chat again um, Dirk's chatting on there about exploding dice um, Krabby says have you tackled any of the character models yet I haven't made actually no I've um, I've just decided to kind of start with these and kind of ease myself in get a feel for them make sure I'm happy with the with the grunts, if you like, and then I'll um I'll move on to the characters and stuff later because I think some of them might take a little bit more a little bit more kind of attention. Really, I don't really want to necessarily paint them on stream if I if I have to really kind of concentrate and think about think about the paint scheme and stuff. Um, but yeah, your stuff's looking good, mate. They uh, look really coming together. I haven't seen your neck ones. Like, did you see you painted yours? Wouldn't mind seeing them, mate. If you've uh, if you've done them, so right. Let's all right. Let's uh, get a bit more on here. I think I'll probably do this this color, and then we'll uh, we'll start to clean up and wrap it up. I think. Peter says the Necron Overlord is a great model to paint, so I hear as I'm not doing it myself. <laughs> didn't you buy the Indomitus set, mate? You did, didn't you? You got it from uh, from Goblin Gaming through my affiliate link, I think. Um, a bit of orange on the eyes there. Um, we're getting there. We're getting there, folks. Yeah, um, these these are purely just for me. Like I say, it's it's quite nice just to paint some stuff for myself. Really, just hang out with you a lot, have a bit of a natter, see what you're all up to. Gabby said, "I thought I'd post them in the group. I'll stick some pics up tomorrow." You might have done me. Like like I say, Facebook doesn't show me everything. Um, 
and I, and, I, and unfortunately I do tend to miss the odd thing. Like especially if it does, if if I haven't managed to catch it, the, like the day it got posted, sometimes it just gets like lost in the stuff. Like I've I've posted my own stuff, and then not being able to find it again, which is just weird. Um, funny bloody system that it is. Peter says correct. Goblin Gaming supplied my set at a great price. I must say, yeah, they're a good bunch of guys at Goblin Gaming. They were. Uh, they're pretty straight up and honest, and uh, they tell it like it is. If they've got delivery problems, they'll be upfront and honest about it. But generally, if it's on their website and it says it's in stock, it's a it's a apparently they've got a really kind of state of the art system that's always up to date for their for their stock levels. And uh, if it says they've got it in, then they've got it in. Unlike some um, some other companies who essentially basically tell you they've got it in and then and then just order them as soon as you you want them. Um, and I wasn't sp speaking about any specific company there, by the way. There's just uh, there's some companies that do that. Um, let's get a little bit in here. Um, Tiberius, hello, mate. I think the only things Facebook makes sure you see is conspiracy theories and racism. I think, unfortunately, mate, you're probably right. Because they're like anybody else, they're like all the other media channels now. They they thrive off controversy and uh, and sort of and bad news and negativity. They they thrive off that kind of stuff, unfortunately. Um, Jacob says I can fly through painting my rank and file models, but when it comes to painting that big money model, I get too nervous and hold my brush still. Do you know what it is, mate? That there's a lot of people like that. They kind of fall down a little bit when it comes to kind of they they're worried about messing it up. Um, should never be worried about messing something up. It's it's only paint. You can always you can always fix it. Everything's fixable. Um, and yeah, just just give just give it a go. Just get stuck in and do it. At the end of the day, if you if you don't paint it, nobody will see it anyway. So what's what's the worst that happens? You paint it and you're not happy with it. And nobody sees it. It's uh, it ain't the end of the world, and if you if you don't dive in and give it a go, you'll 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 never know, will you? So, um, uh, Peter says not to mention the order system crash. Yeah, apparently, mate, they were, they were saying that basically they they use a really reliable system that's like industry standard type stuff, um. And it just could it just couldn't cope, um. So, I mean that kind of tells you a lot about just how popular that that box set was at, at the time, like when 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 like when systems that are designed to handle thousands of orders basically just can't just can't cope with the influx of um of customers, like to to sell out those three hundred copies in three minutes. And that's 300 people going through and getting all of the details processed and everything else. It's just phenomenal. Like I, like I had mine go through it four minutes and I missed out. Like, it's just, that's scary to think how popular that was. But by the same stretch, there are now loads of boxes of Indomitus sitting on them stock, store shelves now. I think it was one of those things where it was just, like GW was saying like it, it was an unprecedented demand. And I kind of believe them. I I honestly think they didn't they didn't necessarily get it wrong. I think they just they almost outdid themselves on the hype. I think they basically hyped it up to a point where everybody wanted it that second. I think they just assumed that actually it would be a bit more of a trickle feed, and they had enough to go around. And and I think to be honest, like because there's still stuff on the shelves, I think they had enough to go around. I don't think there's a problem with it. It was just like uh, it was just crazy crazy times. Um, what's this? Peter says not to mention the order oh, system crash. Yeah, VJ is happening there as well. Tybu is saying doom scrolling, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent, mate. I mean, it's it's happening at the moment now. Like, um, there's not been much happening with the with the COVID stuff. Like, um, like hospital admissions are, are, are low. Like, the death rate's relatively low now. Um. They've had nothing to talk about, so so what they're doing now is this this new maximum of six people thing has now become the uh, the latest bit of news. That let's jump on that and let's talk about that for the next six weeks. 
Uh, James Brace and I run a beer festival and we use Facebook a lot. It's a really bad tool for actually engaging with people, all built around paying for eyeballs rather than actually building a community. I completely agree, mate. It's one of the things I struggle with um, with the Facebook group um, is it, it, it takes like a lot of um, time management, basically, and trying to keep on top of it and trying to... Basically, you, you've got, got to keep posting t- to keep the community engaged because... Um, it, it's not like like discord for example people just chat there all day but because you can't really get a conversation going on facebook because it all gets um it all gets split between different threads and stuff it's really difficult to do um peter saying at least it was worth the wait yes mate uh, Mark was saying my local store has plenty of indomitant boxes still in stock. I think most stores do. I think Rob Brown was posting in our in our Discord group about the pictures of uh, Element Games. They've got boxes of the things stacked high. There's loads of those boxes kicking about. Um, Robert says that we. I just got a warning. We might lose power and water because of wildfires. So going to go and get some bottled water. Take care, everyone. You stay safe, mate, as well. I, mean, I hope everything's okay, and I hope it doesn't turn out to be too bad. But yes, yeah, stay safe, buddy. Superpunk man says, I feel the opposite. I will buy one of the big monster build and paint it first and then look at the small ones and say to myself, well, I have to build at least. Um, yeah, everyone staying safe, safe to Rob. Krabby says, we're still talking about it, so whatever the strategy is, it's good marketing. <laughs> yeah, 100%, mate, 100%. They're, they're the masters of it. They're the absolute masters of it. And it's funny when I notice the kind of some of the flack that um, like Mantic were getting recently for the, for the teasers for the... Um, for their ship game thing, like it's uh, it just goes to show like how how expert GW are at it because then somebody else tries something similar and people just go oh just tell us what it is man. <laughs> um, Jameson, if anyone wants to drink lots of cheap beer near the Dorset Seaside, I can hook you up every Easter weekend. It's for charity. Do you know what it is, mate? I would love to. Um, let's uh. Let's 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 hope it's uh, up and running for next year. Spy Lord says, "How are you getting on with that painting hand, Landy? I love them, mate. I absolutely love them. Having these uh, having these little little bits here that I can just just clip on and spin around, clip them off and put the next one on. I love them." Um, and Tim says, "Can visit employment too." Yeah, I've never I've never been to that storm. I, I've, to be honest, I've not really been down the south coast very much. So maybe one day I'll uh, I'll get down there. Right, I'll uh, wash my brushes, folks, and then I think we'll call that a night because I'm I'm not far off finished there. Not far off finished, these boys. They need um, a little bit of silver on some of the pipe work doing. They need another highlight of orange. But essentially, I've batch painted 10 marines tonight while we've been sitting chatting. Um, yeah, I, I didn't realise you were that far down, uh, James, down there, uh, Dorset Way, mate. It's a bit of a hike for me, I'll be honest. <laughs> it's kind of it's pretty much other end of the com- the country, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure for a beer festival I could make the exception. I'm sure I could. Um, Spider Lord saying I'll have to grab one, Mister Kickstarter. To be fair, me I think the Kickstarter was really just a pre order thing. I mean, I I, all, I think I got the the painting handle like probably six six to eight weeks after I pledged on the Kickstarter. I think they pretty much just were. We're trying to get some pre-orders out there quick, really, I think. But, um, yeah, it was... I'm really happy with it, mate. Like I say, I, I, I've got the original one as well. So this is this is the original one where the, where the tops don't come off. Um, and and I, I absolutely just love the feel of it. Like, when I'm painting in my hand, it's just really comfy. It fits my hand, like, kind of just, like, just right. The GW ones, I feel, are a little bit chunky, and I get a bit of hand cramp with them. But it's it's, it's different for everybody. Everybody's... Always got different size hands and different comforts and stuff, but yeah, for me, mate, I, I love them. Um, Mark's in good night, mate, and all good night, Mark. Thank you very much for coming in, buddy. Buzz is just coming in, mate, just flying in under just as we're about to kind of start the start to close down. Nice to see you, mate. James braces, I'm in pool, mate, lovely part of the world. I can even wangle you free camping at a great campsite. Do you know what it is, mate? You, you get some nice weather down your way. I could probably, I could probably swing a bit of camping, mate, and a, and a, um, and a beer festival. That would be all right. Spider Law says does look more comfy to hold in the GW butt plug. It is for me, mate. I, I mean, I don't have small hands, but I just, I just, I just find it comfy. I think like my hand kind of wraps around it. I just, I just find it comfy in my hand. 
Um, Yorkham's saying it's a bit of a car drive for him. To be honest, Yorkham, you might even be closer than I am. <laughs> Baza says he always comes in when I'm finishing. Yeah, it's always towards the end, isn't it? Ian saying good stream. Thank you very much, mate. And VJ saying small, small hand, hand, small handy. No, I don't actually have particularly small hands, to be fair. But I just, I, I just find that um, the GW ones just like make, make like make make me feel uncomfortable. Let's, let's just let's just leave it at that. <laughs> We're going down a dark path with that one, I think. So, folks, I think we will call it a night there because I'm going to go to bed because I got an early start in the morning. Um, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock UK time, you'll see my next video. I've been doing a review of the Battle Systems um, Fantasy Village terrain. So, you can see what I think of it there. Um, and then the Friday, it'll be 7 o'clock again, there is another video. Um, I'm not going to say what it is because I haven't filmed it yet. I wrote the script thing for it today. I've done loads of B-roll for it. I'm, I know it should be getting filmed tomorrow, but I want to make sure. I don't want to promise it if, it's, if, it if anything goes wrong. But if all goes to plan, there will be another video on Friday. And then that's five videos I've done in the five days this week. Um, that is the plan kind of going forward, really. Is that I'll, um, oh, my TV wants to switch off. Um, that's the plan going forward, really. Now, now I'm getting more into the routine of things. Uh, and I'm kind of nailed down with uh, getting this studio set up to, to be able to switch quickly between doing different types of videos and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I will, uh, I'll see you tomorrow night on the video. Please, please, please do go and check it out. It really helps me if you watch it nice and early as well when the video goes live. The video is only about 8 or 10 minutes long, something like that. Um, so it won't it won't take your entire night to watch it. But yeah, please please do watch it, and please leave a comment as well. Let me know what you think. It all it all helps to kind of spread the word. The more activity, the more interaction the video gets, the more kind of YouTube think oh, people like this will kind of share it out. So yeah, I appreciate everyone's help. Um, <laughs> James saying, "Wait, you make videos, blame me. You should have mentioned it." <laughs> yeah, now and again, mate. Now and again. Um, Jeffrey saying thanks again Andy enjoyed the hanging out with you Fiji saying I love my battle systems village see what I say tomorrow then mate and see if we agree or not um, Dirk says is there really a down vote I always get a down vote mate whenever I do anything I stare GW some, somebody doesn't like me doing games workshop stuff on the channel anyway folks I will see you next time and uh, if, I do, if you don't see you during the videos I won't see you but you'll see me I'll see you on next Monday's live stream take care folks Thanks for watching my video, I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that I've done. If you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon, where you can pledge in support from as little as $2 a month, and there is lots of different tiers and bonuses, which will give you access to a private Discord server, it will give you free t-shirts, free mugs, a podcast every month, and a number of other things, including getting your name at the end of every video, like these awesome folks who already support me now.